Yes, yes. Welcome back to Mama Let's Talk with your girl Boss Lady D and your other leading lady, Mama Legend, the Boss Lady of the Boss Lady. Yes. And tonight we're going to be talking about, um, well, actually this morning, I'm still in the night, excuse me. <laughs> um, I, we're going to be talking about unlovable habits with Miss Bobby. So, I do want to say I want to just appreciate but Miss Bobby coming in and expressing her feelings. Last show was wonderful. Let's give her a round of applause for that. And that's the wrong button. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah, self-worth. If you haven't checked that out, check that out. And Things I Never Said was our first episode. So we are currently on episode three of Unlovable Habits. We are going to give a round of applause and now without further ado, introduce Miss Bobby, Mama Legend. Let's go. I just, I wanted to thank everybody for just listening to me. I'm, I've never been, um, a spokesperson or a motivational speaker. But when I read in the Bible that the older women are supposed to teach the younger women, I wanted to speak about relationships as pertaining to the ones that I have encountered. Now, a lot of women get married, especially black women, and we're taught to wear dresses, and at least I was. Wear dresses, keep your dress pulled down, cross your ankle from right to left, and sit properly, sit up straight so you won't mess up your back, keep your hands in your lap, all the rest of that. It taught us all this stuff about how to be girly, about how to be ladylike. But the one thing they did not teach us about our was about our inner self. And I got married not knowing how to be a wife. I had children not knowing how to be a mother. And sex made me a mother before it made me a wife. And life made me delusional before reality set in. And what I mean by that is, is that when you get married, the Bible says your desires are supposed to be towards your husband. And his desires are supposed to be towards you. We understand that. But where we get to make the mistake at is that we think of it as a sexual thing. And, and, and marriage is, is, is a partnership, it's a business, because we're uplifting each other, we're motivating each other, we're growing as we learn, we learn as we grow. But we didn't, in the black community, we're not taught that. We're not taught that. And people say, oh yeah, my mama taught me how to cook, she taught me how to clean up a house, she taught me how to change my baby's diapers, she taught me how to dress my kids, but your mom did not teach you how to be a woman. A maid can do all of that. What you just said. Or what I just said. But she did not teach us. About the inner us. About this is. I'm going to have moments of self doubt. I'm going to have moments of fear. I'm going to have moments. Where I'm not in love with my husband. Where I don't like him. Where sometimes he literally irritates me. And I want to pack my bags. And walk out the door. They didn't teach us that. They didn't teach us that love hurts. All they taught us about was to live the American dream, have a white picket fence, and just do the best you can. They didn't even teach us how to do the best we can. I left home with a two-year-old daughter who had more sense than I had. And I paid my rent, but nobody ever said, don't forget to pay your light bill. Light bill? I thought mama paid that. And, and I mean, I was I was so clueless. So I didn't pay it. Then I looked around one day and I flipped the light switch and the lights didn't come on. I said, oh, I need little light bulbs. When I say delusional, I mean delusional. So I went and bought, bought light bulbs. Brand new. Never been taken out the package or nothing. Put them in the ceiling. Put them in the lamps. Flipped the lights. Turned on the switch. Nothing came on. Then I went and got my mail. Thank God I was a good reader. Read it, realized that, hey, your lights are off. And I was like, they, I live in an apartment building and they can cut off my lights? Yeah, because you have your own unit. Duh, wasn't taught that either. 
So then I called We, we Energies. And they told me that if I pay such and such amount, they would come back the next day. Not the day I called, but the next day and turn my lights back on. Between 8 in the morning and 8 at night. So mm. I'm sitting in the dark house with a two-year-old child and pregnant with no with a two-year-old child. And we're in the dark. Nobody said go buy you some candles. Nobody told me anything about flashlights. I knew what a flashlight was, but I didn't know that you could go get a big flashlight and that it would light up your whole house. Nobody told me that. I didn't know nothing. And you know what? I ain't trying to be funny. I didn't ask either. I just mm-hmm. automatically mm-hmm. thought you pay your rent and everything would be fine. That the lights, the water, all that was included. I didn't know that. Right. And I said that to say this. Is that there's so much we don't know. And we don't ask. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We, we mm-hmm. are taught that if we go outside half naked and we with our man, he likes us to look like that. He, he tells his friends, ain't my girl sexy. Mm. Why they all get by themselves with each other and say, man, why you let your girl dress like a slut? She mm. don't look like no slut. Why? You give me a certain couple of dollars, you can have her. You know, stuff like that. We're, we're not taught that they talk behind our backs. Gross. Mm-hmm. behind our backs. Mm-hmm. They talk under our clothes. Mm-hmm. They don't teach us that. The black community does not teach us that. Yeah. They don't teach us that we're follow that we're leaders. We become followers because we're not taught leadership. Right. They don't teach us that if we don't buy groceries every time we get paid, we're going to run out of food. Right. They don't teach us that the main this is the main stuff you need to keep in the house. So if you don't have money, you can still eat. My grandmother kept Flour, sugar, beans, rice, potatoes, and cooking oil in the house. Why? So that when we ran out of meat, we could still eat. Mm-hmm. But they don't teach us that. The, the, new, the new millennium girls don't know how to do that. They get their hair done, their nails done, their toes done. They get all this perfume and all this oil. They get massage from head to toe. And I don't get me wrong, y'all girls be looking the bomb. But you know what? Let me just be real with you. The inside is fucked up. Your emotions is frazzled. You can come out the room with your lashes done, your hair laid, and think that you lit. And he can take one look at you and say, why you look like that? You look like a fucking bitch. Mm. And then your whole self-esteem, or as the Bible says, your continence hits the floor. But nobody says, you're strong. You can do this. Forget him. Keep it going. Keep it moving. They don't tell us that. Right. And they don't tell you to research, like you said, about meals. Um, how to prepare potatoes where it's a meat substitute. And I pulled up some. It says potatoes more than just a glorified side dish. Potatoes are the star ingredient in several meals. Their versatile flavor and hearty texture make them the perfect meat substitute when you desire a filling plate. That means getting full. So in addition to being flavored in several ways, this veggie can also be cooked using different methods. And then it lists different ways you can cook it where you don't have a lot of money. But potatoes has always been the cheapest meal growing up that I ever had. But I was the most fullest when we had those type of meals. Because a lot of kids eat a lot and are obese because they're not full at the meal. They get in our generation, noodles is now a meal. They don't normalize that. Oh, I get them some uh, two, three cases of noodles and some water. They'll be all right. Noodles is not a meal. No. Just like you dressing slutty is going to make a man respect you. The man you're with is not going to respect you. And, and, and you let know, me, let me just say this. A lot of times when a man, when you're in a relationship with a man and he puts you down, it's because his self-esteem is messed up as well. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. he does not want you to do better with your life because then he starts feeling that you think that you're above him. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is, is that if you're up here and he's down there, then he feels like, then that's when the abuse sets in. Because before... That's the one thing I learned from the movie, The Mac. Before they can put their hands on you, they have to mess with your head. They have to put you in a point where everything that they say is gospel to you. And I'm telling you, when they start dragging you down that road, and they start putting their hands on you, and you scared to leave, you scared to even talk without their permission, Mm -hmm. that's because they've got your mind. And that's too much control for any man to have. 
because God did not put them here for that. They are supposed to love us the way God loves the church, and they're not doing that. And because we don't have inner love or self-love, we put up with anything. But they always said back in the day that if you fall for anything, you won't stand up for nothing. Mm -hmm. And I was I was like that. Mm -hmm. I was not physically abused. No man has ever like literally laid his hands on me. But I was mentally all jacked up. Men telling me I was too dark. My hair was short. Um, I was short. Um, some of your kids are light skinned. Some of your kids are dark. I can't be with a woman like that who got two toned kids and all that kind of stuff. I can't be with a woman that don't want to work. All she want to do is stay at home with her babies. Let me tell y'all something. I had nine kids, okay? Nine. And I had one child with a disability. I, my daughter, Sabrina, is autistic. I had a daughter that, uh, that had problems going to the bathroom. I had one daughter that had a small stomach. I had a son that had severe asthma. And I couldn't work like a regular mother at eight to five job. So I had to work daycare so that I could have flexible hours. So if I needed to go home, I could. Mm -hmm. And daycare didn't pay a lot. It didn't pay a lot back then. I don't know what it pays now. I just know that it didn't pay a lot back then. So the welfare at that time was supplementing income. They don't do that anymore. And I'm saying this to say this. We are so unlearned. It's so much stuff. I, I'm telling you, I taught my daughters how to survive on $20 a week. Mm -hmm. And I can teach any woman how to do that. But the bottom line is, is that we don't want to listen to that because we think that certain things is beneath us. Don't act like you're beneath me when we all got the same zip code. It's called P-O-V-E-R-T-Y, poverty. We all got the same zip code. And poverty is overrated. Mm -hmm. We are like this because we don't want to help each other. Right. If the sister next door to me got five kids and I got nine, if we was to put our resources together, we could be rich. But because I was down on myself, she was down on herself, her man wasn't no good. My man wasn't no good. We didn't want to help each other. Why should I help her? What if she turn around and be better than me? Why can't we pull together and just be better together? Right, right. But we can't do that. They did it in the 60s. How do you think we were able to sit on the bus this week? We were able to sit anywhere on the bus. Go anywhere in the store. Live anywhere we wanted to live because we did it as a team. And us as black women, we don't do nothing as a team. If one sister is making a thousand dollars and she start doing good, she's not going to come back and pour it to the other sisters. Well, let them get up here like I got up here. Well, you need to get on the TV, on the radio, in the newspaper. Tell us how you made it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because you have a gift to make it up there, don't my, let me show me how to take my gift where I can get it up there. And maybe we can just do a multi-million dollar business and under your umbrella, we all got gifts and everybody got money. Yeah, because but no, we're not going to do that. We. Yeah. We, and I don't mean to cut my daughter off, but no, I'm good. so passionate about this. Mm -hmm. I'm passionate about this. Because we as black women, as black people, as black families, mm -hmm. we so busy cutting each other up that we don't realize that we are the potato. We are the main source. We are what makes us full. If I'm going through a storm... And I grab boss lady's hand and she's going through a storm. As I'm coming out, I'm pulling her through. Because I'm praying my way out. And then I grab her hand and she's learning from me to pray her way out. That's how we do it. If you're drowning and I throw you a lifesaver and I still reach out my hand to you, I'm helping you. Stop looking at it as if I'm, I'm criticizing you. Why are you trying to help me? What is it that you want from me? I don't want nothing from you. Let me help you. Let me get you to where I used to be. Mm -hmm. Let me get you out of that situation. Mm -hmm. I have been there. I know what it's like because you don't get do nothing but playing in the mud. All you do when you get playing in the mud, you get dirty. That's all pigs do. When pigs play in the mud, they get dirty. And you know what? Mud is sticky and it's hard to get off. Mm -hmm. And when you got all that mud in your head and you got all that garbage in your head, nobody can help you but God. Because you want to sit there and you waiting for the next best thing. But I'm telling you, God says, all those who are burdened and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. There is no peace in this world. Why do you think we got homeless people? Why do you think we got people walking the streets talking to themselves? Because there ain't no peace in this world. There's no peace here. 
We're trying to find love in between a man's legs. I'm telling you, nine babies, it ain't down there. I tried. We're trying to find love in clothes and in makeup. Those are masks. You can't find no love in that. You can find girls dressed up and look so doggone beautiful that when they walk past the tree, that tree will literally melt. But on the inside, it's nothing but trash. Because she's all messed up. And she don't want to tell the world, look what I did to my life. Look, let me say, let me say this. Accountability. I went to sleep at 18 years old. I woke up at 43 with nine babies and a $1,200 a month income. And I didn't know how the hell me and my kids was going to make it. I paid my house note. I paid my bills. I bought food. And I didn't have nothing left. But I prayed and I asked God, Lord, please give me a mind and a wisdom and, 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 and ideas so that I can make things better for me. And as I talk to you, I have my eyes closed and my fist ball because I think of how I had to fight to get them kids grown. Was it easy? No. Some, some women say, well, it's hard for me because my kids is bad. Let me tell you something. Stop listening to society. Go get you a belt. And tell them, look, either you're going to listen or you're going to be in your room. These kids have taken over your homes. I see kids 15, 16 years old talking back to their parents. And one of my kids even thought about it. They wouldn't be here. They wouldn't be here. And it's not a threat. It's the reality. If you that grown that you think you can get up in my face after I'm struggling, I don't work a 10-hour shift, and you want to talk slick to me, you need to go. Period. My mother used to say, get them grown and get them gone. Get them out of there. When they get 16 to 17 years old and they start asking for expensive stuff, 16 to 17, they old enough to get a job. My grandson had all summer to work. He didn't work. Guess what? He got a uniform for school. He didn't get on new shoes. Why he didn't get none? Because he didn't have no job. And the kind of shoes he want, I wasn't buying them. And neither was his mama. And this is what we got to get back to. You may say that your mama was harsh and that your grandma was doing too much. But the issues that you got with your kids, she didn't have them with hers. And she may be in the house by herself. Your grandma. Your mama may be living in the house by herself and y'all all on your own. Y'all may sit up in your house and say, I ain't talking to her. Because she was all this and that to me and this and that to me. While you running around your house trying to figure out why your daughter don't want to wear no bra. And why your son want to walk around the house in his drawers. Did your brothers and you, you and your siblings do that? No, you didn't because your mama would have knocked you on your ass. But then now you saying, I don't want to be as hard on my kids as my mama was on me. Listen to this. When you are raising children, you are either raising somebody's dream or somebody's nightmare. Mm -hmm. And it ain't the other kids that are getting killed on the street. It's ours. Boys walking around with them dreads in their hair and they have no style to it. Like I told a boy yesterday. I said, what's the purpose of having your hair like that? It has no style. It's just hanging. They look like human mops. <laughs> yes. I and see then y'all want to sit up and say, it's that. okay for them to wear their hair like that. No, it's not. Because they're trying to find their personality in somebody else. That's not how you raise them. If you're going to wear your hair like that, you're going to get your hair trimmed and cut and then have the dreads. Fix. It's people out there that will, will do your hair. If they can spend two and three hundred dollars a month on weed, they can get somebody to do their hair. Yeah. And yep. if they don't want to get their hair done, and they don't want to pull up their pants, and they don't want to wash their butt, they need to go stay with the girl that's in love with that mess. And they need to get out of your house because if they that grown, they don't need to be there because mm -hmm. you're raising kids, not grown people. Right. And if you got a man in your house that's scared to talk to your kids because he's not the father of them kids, then he don't need to be with you because that means he's not the man of the house. Look, I'm the man of this house. I pay the bills and the rent. I take care of your mama. I take care of y'all. You don't want to listen? Bye. Mm -hmm. And if you can't stick by him, then you're wrong because there's not a lot of good men out there. But when you got one, embellish him. Make him feel good about who he is. Mm -hmm. Treat him like a king if he's acting like one. But if he ain't, get him out of there. Stop holding on to thorns. You don't want roses that's got that's got the thorns on them. You want them to take the thorns off so when you hold them, they don't prick you in the hand. 
So why would you deal with a man that's got thorns all over him? Mm -hmm. That every time you touch him, he's pricking you. But I think the one mistake that we made, and I'm, as I'm learning about relationships, um, that people need to be friends first. They don't need to jump in the bed and then make all these arrangements. They need to have a discussion about what type of relationship they're going to have before they even step into intimacy. Because if you're not intimate to yourself, how you're going to be intimate with someone else? You can't be. It's impossible. And if you don't have those discussions, how you going to know what type of person you're dealing with? And that's the mistake our communities make. And this ain't a black and white thing. This is an everybody thing. Because right. deaf don't get shit about color. STDs don't give a shit about color. Cold, and, pre- cold, and unplanned pregnancy don't give a shit about color. And antiviruses. COVID. When COVID hit, everybody was upset. Because they had to stay in the house. And they had to start wearing masks. Nobody didn't want to wear a mask. Everybody said they couldn't breathe. But guess what COVID did? COVID put everybody on punishment. Y'all didn't want to take y'all butts to work. Kids didn't want to go to school. Mamas didn't want to get up off their butt and make sure their kids went to school. Now you got to sit in the house and look at everybody that got on your nerves. Mm -hmm. But if you had a did what you were supposed to do, if you had a kept on praying, kept asking God for help, making these kids go to school, make sure your man go to work, make sure you get up and go to work. Mm -hmm. And if you a stay-at-home mom, why is your house nasty? Why you nasty? Why you can't get up and do what you need to do? All I hear these young mamas say, I'm tired, I'm tired, and I ain't got time for that. I got one question. I asked one of my daughters this. If you ain't got time for that, you mind telling me what you got time for? What are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your time? Some of y'all get $1,300, $1,400 a month in stamps. And then y'all want to come and complain that y'all ain't got no food. Stop selling your damn stamps. Right. You're selling your stamps to people that's got tons of food in their house. And they wouldn't spit on you if you was on fire. Yep. And they'll report you to the state. For selling your doggone stamps to them. Do you know how many businesses have been shut down because they're buying stamps from people because they're too lazy to spend their money? We as black people, we got to wake up. We got to be better to each other. We mm-hmm. treat each other like garbage. Yep. You can see one girl, she can walk into the mall and be dressed to the nines and she can look nice. I went into the mall one time. I, all I was going to the mall to get was some mascara or something for church one day. And I went by myself. I had on some jogging pants, a t-shirt. I had me a, a, my purse strapped around my shoulder. And I had a scarf on. And two young girls walked past me and said, that's why she ain't got no man. Look how she looked. Now, they don't know nothing about me. I could have been rich. Could have looked at them and said, I'm just going to pour into them because they look like wonderful people. But because of the fact that we put each other down, we automatically, you don't automatically summed up who I am and you ain't even said hi to me. Yeah. All of a sudden, I've been, I don't become this dirty ass bitch that you don't even know. Mm-hmm. I just took one look at her and I don't like her. You don't know me. And it's because you don't like me. It's because my spirit and your spirit were uncomfortable being in the same place. That's what it was. Mm-hmm. So I ignored them. Now, when I was younger, stuff like that used to make me cry. But growth comes with wisdom, and wisdom comes with age. And we have to learn, like my daughter had to teach me, that it ain't about me. And I can't make everything about me. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And it took years for me to learn that. Because my own kids used to make me cry. And it took years for me to learn that. And I'm going to tell y'all something. I understand being in a relationship, and when the man break up with you, you feel like you was going to be with this man for the rest of your life. Then you go somewhere, and you sit in a chair, and you look around, and it's 10 years later, and all your kids is grown, and you ain't did shit with your life. I get it. Been there, done that. Let me tell you something. Men are just like buses. If you wait another 15 minutes, here come another one. Mm-hmm. That's how they are. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you need to stay out of relationships and just work on you. Because if yes. you keep going in one bad relationship after another, after another, after another, then every, then obviously it ain't the man. What are you doing that's attracting all these bums? You got a bum magnet and you need to demagnetize that motherfucker. Because mm-hmm. I had one. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm 62 years old. I'll be 63 next week. Took me 50 something years to demagnetize it. And now I can see a bum a mile away. Mm-hmm. Do I walk? No, I run. Because I, I don't know for sure if my bum magnet is completely demagnetized. Because even when you disconnect electricity, if you don't separate them wires, they still are active. 
So my my bun magnet may be demagnetized, but the wires, my my blood that flows through my veins, it still works. Right. And you see a good looking man, and then ding ding, it's back magnetized again. And they can be the finest thing, and they can be the best thing since sliced bread, but can be on the inside be nothing but mud and garbage. I told a story once about a house that my daughter loves when I tell the story. It's about a house that was real beautiful on the outside. It had wonderful grass. It had beautiful flowers. And it was just built really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it had a fence in the backyard. And it said on there, beware of dogs. And the lady that lived in this house lived in there for over 20 years. And then she died. And what happened was, is that everybody came around to see who was going to get the house. But nobody wanted it. So the city decided to tear the house down. And people was coming past saying, that house had a beautiful staircase. The frame and the structure was amazing. It was just beautiful. And they tore the house down. And people were walked past it for years to come. And talked about how once that was a beautiful standing home. But you know what people didn't know? That house is a parable. Because that house was me. I was the house. I let pet peddlers in. My grass had turned brown. And the brownness of the grass is the venereal diseases. Okay? Mm, 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 mm. And the stairs had broken down from all the people that I let crawl up in my bedroom. And the kitchen had fell apart because I was so busy feeding everybody that I didn't get a chance to take care of me. Mm. And I looked around one day and I decided to go in the backyard. And the grass was green back there. You know why the grass was green back there? Because every time I went in somebody else's backyard or went in that backyard, I got bit by that dog. By that same dog. They used to say years ago, if the dog bites you the first time, that's the dog's fault. But if the dog bites, that same dog bites you the second time, it's your fault. And the thing is, is that I kept allowing it. And I did have a beautiful staircase. I had a wonderful figure. Beautiful young face. Had a, my whole life ahead of me. But because of the peddlers and the soothsayers and the witches and all that other garbage that came into my life was all out there on my grass trying to sell me the American dream. And I took it. This person came and this is how it's supposed to go. Next person came, this is how it's supposed to go. Next person came and said, you do this, you do that. And I tried everything just so I could be better. And when my house started to disintegrate and I got sick, nobody was there to take up for me. Nobody stood for me. Nobody sat by my bed and held my hand and said it's going to be all right. But God was yet there. My babies were there. And even in the midst of all that, I still had nerve enough to have an attitude and say, what they doing around me? They don't care nothing about me. Da, 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 da. I still had an attitude. And my mama came to me and flat out looked me in my face and told me, I don't know what the hell your problem is. You got these kids to raise. You ain't got time to be sitting up here being sad and feeling sorry for yourself. When she first said that to me, I was mad at her for over two years and wouldn't even talk to her. My mama is dead and gone. And you know what? She was right. I wasn't the first person that ever got hurt. I wasn't the first person that ever got their they life destroyed. How was I going to fix it if I'm sitting there feeling sorry for myself? So I decided to go into a mental coma. And I didn't do shit. And when I decided to wake up from that mental coma, guess what? My kids was grown. But let me tell you how good God is. God covered those kids. He fed those kids. He kept those kids in clothes. And all nine of them graduated high school. Do I take the credit for that? No, I don't. I take accountability for the way I raised them. But I will not take accountability for my children's success because that had nothing to do with me. They did that on their own. And because we don't take accountability for the way we raise our kids, that's why we go through what we go through. If you let them lay around and be lazy, and then when they get grown, you want to say, oh, they was always lazy. No, they wasn't. No child is born that way. Of course, they're lazy when they're born. 
Just like that song says, all of us was born handicapped. People say, no, we wasn't. What baby you know was born that could hold up their own head and could walk and could roll over by themselves? Wasn't no baby born like that. None. And if they are, I, don't, I ain't never read about it. We taught our kids how to walk. We taught them how to feed themselves. We taught them how to put on the right shoe and the left shoe. But we didn't taught them how to walk in greatness. That's what we don't want to take accountability for. Right. We didn't teach them how to walk in greatness. We call them kings and queens. Kings and queens are disciplined. And we didn't discipline our children. Mm -hmm. Our children are running amok in the streets. They're getting high. They're having sex. They ain't having sex in houses. Our kids are in parks. Are in basements on dirty mattresses. Are in backyards on the grass. Mm -hmm. They're doing stupid stuff. They're sleeping with anything and anybody. They're trying to find their identity. They're trying to get back what they lost when we lost every when we when we lost everything when Jesus went to the cross we gained all that back because he took on our burdens because we owed a debt that we couldn't pay and he paid that debt when he died but we still want to sit up and live in our uh, we sit up there and want to be all proper and shit. Well, she talking about all that. She talking about her life. That ain't got nothing to do with me. While you sitting up there in your gown with your cigarette in between your fingers and you ain't got a damn dime to your name. And you ain't got no drawers on because the damn drawers you've got is too fucking small. Because your man is sitting up in the house saying, no, you don't need no drawers on. So every once in a while he come past, stick his hand under there and tickle you a little bit. Don't tell me that ain't what you're doing. Nine babies, bitch. Did it too. <laughs> did it too and that's what's wrong with us we want to talk about certain things but we don't want to keep stuff real it's reality you know they had a song out a long time ago said I, 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 you're hooked on a feeling hooked on a feeling that's what's wrong with us we hooked on a feeling I'm, I'm old enough now to know that sex, ain't, ain't, sex is a feeling and when it's over with you still got to pay your bills. Yeah, we're definitely in a feelings, in my feelings generation. We, gotta, we still got to pay we our are. bills. We still got to buy food. Kids still got to go to school. Yeah. People, I, I see mothers wake up and say, oh, her hair looked like that because I didn't feel like comedy. So when she go to school and they call her a bum and they say she look crazy, you want to go to school and cuss the school out. Why you letting, them, why you letting these motherfuckers bum, uh, bully my baby? Why you didn't do her hair? Why you didn't wash her clothes? Why she smell like pee? Yeah, like you said, why didn't you set her up for success? You set her up for failure when you let her walk out that door looking like a doggone homeless person. And then she get on the bus and, or get on get in the school and tell somebody that she hungry, she ain't ate in a couple of days. Well, she lying. She did eat. I gave her some noodles. Like my daughter said, noodles is a snack. It's not a meal. It's really not. And all it's doing is making your kids fat. Let me tell you something. The bigger they get, the more they're going to want to eat. Period. So, unless you got it going on like that, I suggest you get your ass in that kitchen and that start rattling cute. them Obese pots and and children is not cute at all. And you know what? Y'all watch all these videos about how they make all this fancy food and stuff. Oh, she made her, her greens with this. She made her cabbage with that. Me and my daughter next month, we're going to start making videos showing you how to make food with what we had. With just butter, salt, and pepper. And where them kids will eat it. Where I used to get my kids noodles, salt and pepper, butter, and toasted butter bread. I'm going to show you how to do that. Mm -hmm. Because what we need to do is stop making all these movies and videos about all this expensive ass food. Let's keep it real. A lot of us ain't got it like that. Those cereal bars that they make that they sell in them stores, please. I can show y'all how to make that. Them granola bars, that ain't nothing but the oatmeal that you get them kids in the winter time. Mm -hmm. We are black people. We are the creative people in the world. And now all we do is copy and paste. We don't sit and make nothing. Sewing? I don't know how to sew. My mom didn't teach me how to sew. So you send your kids to school in raggedy clothes because you don't know how to sew? All you do is go in and out, in and out. The same way you have sex, bitch. In and out, in and out. That's how you sew. <laughs> And then you want somebody to feel sorry for you. Well, didn't nobody teach me how to do this and that. They got videos on how to take a bath. 
They got videos on how to take a shower. They got videos on how to wash your hair. They got videos on how to put a perm in your kid's head. You know how to watch TV. If you can't read, you can listen. You can hear. That's Some people are visual a lady on my job. We she, have yeah. no excuse anymore for why we can't do shit. I made furniture, bought clothes, revamped clothes, and there was no YouTube on the face of this earth at that time. Now that y'all got all this social media, you motherfuckers now, y'all should be rich. For real. For yeah. real. But that's even a process. That's even taking out the time to discipline yourself to do something like that on a regular basis. You're not just going to overnight, okay, I'm going to get up and start on it. You know, like when I started this podcast, it took a lot for me to get to the push, the record button. I had to go do some research. I had to figure out if this was something that was real. I had to figure out what it takes to do it. But when I just did it and didn't think too much about it, it worked. And then over time, consistently, little bits at a time, like I always say, you'll start developing the skills that you need to get the process completed. Because a lot of us will say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and never start. And people will start and not be consistent. And I think that's what's missing in society. People have good intentions, but it's good intentions going to lead you to the success that you're looking for. Well, let me show you. Excuse me, I'm eating. Let me show you. My grandmother used to say that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm. Now, if that's the road you want to go on, keep paving your road with good intentions. I'm going to tell y'all something. There's women out here that have gone through hell and back. But we are the race of people that walk from the cotton fields to the White House. They have put marks on our backs. They have killed our ancestors. They have hung us from trees. They have beat us down in society. They have ripped our families apart. And we still stand strong to this day. But the reason why we are not bettering ourselves, because we really don't think that we're worth it. Let me tell you something. If you live on First Street and you're tired of the neighborhood and the community, save your money and get your babies the hell out of there. And let everybody think what they want. If you want to raise your kids in the suburbs, raise them. If they talk like white kids, so what? You don't have to raise your kids around violence. Everybody's like, why they got to go to suburbs? It's, it's violence everywhere. It may be violence everywhere, but you know one thing about the suburbs? It's quiet. It ain't no corner stores or liquor stores over there. But see how your thinking destroys, that type right. of thinking destroys something that ain't even happened yet. People are speaking on neighborhoods and, and situations they ain't even been in yet. Amen. It be your thinking. And you listening to other negative broke people telling you where to go and where to stay. Right. And in my opinion, broke people don't have one. They got a right to it, but it don't apply to my life. They used to say years ago that opinions are just like assholes. Everybody got one. Of course. But that their but people's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. Right. And that's real. And what you have to understand is is that you are more than your situation. And you're better than your situation. See, when I was younger and I was raising those kids, there was nobody in my life telling me that I could do better. That I can exceed far beyond my wildest imagination. Nobody said that to me. My kids did. But because they were children, I was arrogant. And said, oh, they kids, they don't know what they're talking about. But they did know what they was talking about. Ever since boss lady been two years old, she always told me to get away from these toxic ass people. I didn't listen to her. She was too. I used to tell her to shut up. Before I could even spell it, it's just instinct. Right. Most of life is common sense. Right. And if your inner is telling you this ain't right, nine times out of ten, it's not right. It's not. We we have uh, been assigned to the devil just like we've been assigned to angels. Right. It's which one you're listening to determines what you're going to actually do. Right. I agree. So you can't be negative and expect a positive result. Just like you can't live a negative life and expect a positive life. Well, you can't think negatively and then live a positive life. You got to choose. And some people don't even realize they have a choice. 
No matter how many times you play basketball, if you want the team to win, <clears throat> if you want the team to win, you got to put the ball in the basket. And they can go out there and play a new game with a new team every time it's time to play. But you still got to do the same thing. You got to put the ball in the basket. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to get on the court, you can't complain if the team don't win. You can't be a spectator in your life and expect for the game to keep moving. It's not. We are the women in the household. When we go to bed, everybody go to bed. And I know that. Because when I get sick, everybody in the damn house go to bed. And I don't get it. I used to fuss about it all the time. Why is everybody in the bed and I'm the one with the issue? One time my kids made me so mad. I said, why am I taking medicine and y'all crazy? No, my kids did. They stood in the middle floor and started laughing at me. And one day I got fed up. They were little. My oldest daughter was gone. She had moved out. And I just stood in the middle of the hallway and I started screaming. Ah! Ah! To the top of my lungs. And everybody came over there. One of the kids called my mama and I wouldn't stop screaming. And they said, my mother came over there. She said, what's wrong with you? I looked at her in her face and I started screaming in her face. And she said, I'm going to get the hell out of here because there's something wrong with you. And they was like, can we go with you, Granny? And she said, yeah, come on, because she's crazy. And I kept screaming, and I kept screaming, and I kept screaming. And then after I got through screaming, I looked around. There wasn't nobody in the room with me. You know what I said? Can you hear me now? Because we need a mental health day. We need time. When them kids is at school, I didn't take advantage of it. I wish I would have because I didn't know no better. When them kids is at school and you at home by yourself and your man going to work, a boyfriend or whatever you want to call your significant other, that's your time to work on you. People say, yeah, I got in the shower. Now, get in the bathtub. Soak your ass. Sit there. Light a candle. Get you a blunt, a cigarette, a drink, whatever it is, and just chill the fuck out. Because sometimes as a black woman, we need to chill out. Sometimes we just need to take care of us. And just make it a mental health day. That's what I'm having today. A mental health day. It ain't about my kids. It ain't about my job. It's all about me. It's a mental health day. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to go to a workshop today. I texted the lady. And I told her I wasn't coming because I was tired. And I needed a mental health day. Mm -hmm. If she does not understand that or didn't read the text. And she comes by anyway. Then she be done just came by. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'm not going to worry about it. Because I spent my whole life worrying about other people's feelings. We as black women, stop trying to be people pleasers. Just be a black woman. Look, I got four kids. I can't talk on the phone right now. I'll call you when they go to sleep. If they go outside, get up off your ass, get a chair, and sit out there with them. Why? Because kids do dumb shit when you let them be out there alone. I know that because my older two daughters told me that. They was coming down the street one day. My baby son with his bad ass was climbing on somebody's house. Mama Corey climbing on somebody's house. I said, I'm going to beat his ass. Mm -hmm. He got in that house. I had a yardstick. And I beat the shit out of him to the point where the yardstick broke in half. So I put both of them together in my hand and I kept whooping his ass. Then I had one daughter ate up my damn bread. I beat her ass with the bread she was eating. <laughs> until there was nothing left. But the damn rapper around the bed and the kids said, Mama, stop hitting her. There's nothing left but the rapper. I didn't care. I kept beating her. And they kept saying, why you do that? Why you do that? Because I wanted to teach her. I taught you when you were two not to mess with nobody else's shit. It was either that or them pretty little silver bracelets they put on you before they throw you in the back of a police car. Hey, Amen. That's what those beatings were. And you can sit on different social media platforms and say that was a form of slavery. But no, it was a form of discipline. And it was showing us to keep our keep us from breaking the law exactly. in the world. Sure. I don't look at that as abuse. I look at it as abuse when you're beating on someone that didn't do anything. Right. And also, too, you're beating on someone that does not know that they were wrong. Right. But if you know what you did was wrong and you do it anyway. Yeah, it's cause for discipline. Yep. This is why I don't understand about certain uh, policies and different stuff about these different jobs. You write a person up or you reprimand a person for do, violating uh, a, situ a, a rule or regulation. 
But did you really sit down and actually talk to that person about the, the terms and conditions? And if you do it anyway, now that you understand what you were doing and you do it anyway, now there's disciplinary action? No. Because you're so thirsty to take your authority to the next level, and it's the wrong one. Yep. So you can't fully understand to understand that does this person really understand their job? No, they do they really understand before the consequences happen? This is why we don't do this. And this is why we take disciplinary action. Yep. Because you know better. Not because you didn't know. And, and I'm going to say this, that uh, you see something, say something. Y'all say that, but y'all really don't do that. It'll be two and three days. Something that's top priority. My thing is, you need to address it right away. You don't wait until you feel like addressing it. That's not true leadership. That's not true discipline. That is disrespectful. And your ass need to be wrote up for that. But that's morals versus rules. And people don't know the difference. And that's why things get screwed up. And the communication sucks. We definitely, as a black community, need to work on our communication skills and our social skills. We suck at that. We don't talk about what's important. We talk about what agrees with us. That victim mindset. And it is destroying our relationships. Whatever type it is. And then we also need to learn that there's more relationships than just intimate and business. There's all different types of relationships. I can go to Google right now and type in what are some of the types of relationships you could be in. And I bet you more than one pops up. Or more than two. And not only that. I tell you something else we need to Get work on. Get some in. understanding first before Y'all you start rushing stop. into stuff. Y'all literally need to stop coming up to the school dressed like you're going out hoeing. And then the other kid, you walk in and you got a son. And his friends are saying, man, your mom, she got it going on. She got it banging, la da 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 Then your dad come in smelling like weed. Be like, oh, yeah, your dad going to have to give me some of that. That smell good. Why y'all come to school like that? You may walk in the building one day and it might be a police officer sitting right there. Or undercover. Y'all don't know what's going on. The school might be under investigation for something they did at the top. Y'all don't y'all don't know nothing. You don't know nothing. As black people, y'all just do stuff. Y'all are not entitled still. Right. That has not happened yet. Y'all still are not entitled. But y'all want all this respect. If you want to be respected, you gotta act respectfully. And that's real talk. People drive up, they block driveways and get a ticket and want to get mad. Why are you going to give me a ticket for blocking my own driveway? Because if I'm coming down the street, I don't want to walk around your damn car. Or a drunk driver can hit it and total your car while it's parked. And I've seen that spot. happen. Now there's more damage than you just moving your car up. Let me tell you something. Y'all don't get traffic tickets because y'all broke the law. Y'all get traffic tickets because y'all was stupid. You know when you got your damn license that you ain't supposed to speed. You know that when you read the damn sign that you ain't supposed to park there. And if you can't read, you ask somebody. Y'all want to be all proud and all this, that, and the other. And where do you at? Where do you all, some of y'all be at when somebody is talking to y'all? They like they, the I know they not. clearly explain the terms and conditions of your driver's license. Having a driver's license doesn't make you entitled. Actually, having a driver's license is a privilege because you can get that privilege taken away from you. And that's why a lot of you aren't driving. That's why a lot of your cars are being towed. And that's why you got all them tickets. And then you don't even have the discipline to pay them. If you don't want to pay tickets, then do the right thing to avoid it. Some of this stuff y'all going through, y'all can avoid it, but you don't want to because I'm, this is what, I don't agree with that. I'm in that victim mindset. It's about how I feel and what, and if it ain't agreeing with me, then I'm not doing it. But that's fucking you up. That's fucking you up real bad without Vaseline. Y'all need to get off the mindset that it's my money. I can do whatever I want to do with it. Yeah. You know what? You're right about that. But one thing my daughter didn't mention, if you don't want to pay tickets on a car, then you don't want to keep the car up, buy a fucking bus pass. Buy a bus pass. Mm -hmm. Walk to the bus stop. that's wisdom right there. Walk to the bus stop. Because you know what? I was on the bus one day, and when I told my daughter this, she fell out laughing. I got on the bus one day, and when I pulled up to the stop I was getting off on, I told that bus driver, I said, I'm getting off this bus. I ride this bus every day to go to work. 
I'm going to need you to take care of my car. Make sure it's got gas in it. Make sure it's clean. <laughs> make sure that you take out the garbage or the trash. And make sure you take care of you. Because I don't want to ride on this bus with you and there's something wrong with you. Amen to that. And he started laughing. And every time he see me, even now that I no longer ride that bus, he always hugged me and thanked me. He said that day that I told him that he went home and started taking better care of himself. Mm, see? But the thing about it mm -hmm. is... Mm -hmm. Y'all do stuff to stress y'all life out. People used to say, you got all them kids and you ain't got no car. Nigga, they don't make nine seaters. They call them buses. Mm -hmm. If I could have afforded a small bus, we would have had a car. Again, broke people can't tell me what to do. Broke people don't have an opinion in my life. We not on the same level. And this is what... Uh, me and a best friend was talking about all the time. Get a while from round broke people. people. Right. And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about broken as a person. Right. Because if you hang around 10 broke people, you're going to be number 11. That's not just a cliche. That is real. Right. And the thing about it is, if you want to do better, you got to have a mindset to do better. And I used to have this plaque on my daughter's wall when she was a teenager. And, and she probably will remember when I say it. It's better to have money and not need it than to need money and not have it. And that's real. Because if you don't pay all your bills and you don't buy food, say you got $100 left. Kids got everything they need. You don't need nothing. Know what we do as black people? Well, I'm going to go buy me a chicken dinner. Well, I'm going to go to the shop and buy them $50 shoes I want. You go buy the $50 shoes. Say the lady forgot to charge you tax. Now you got $40 left. I'm going to the movies with my friend. Okay, movies cost damn near $20 now. Popcorn damn near $5 and the drink is damn near 5 So now you come home, you done bought a brand new pair of shoes, you done oh, went like to the 10. movies, and you got $10. And guess what? You got to go to work for the next two weeks and you ride the bus. And $10 only lasts for one week. And you expect other people to get you to, get to work. You to work. And then get an attitude. Well, I did this and this and so-and-so, and they can't make sure I get to work. That's not your job's responsibility. It really is Let me isn't. tell you what your job's responsibility it is. It really isn't. Your job's responsibility is to pay you for services rendered. That's it. If you go above and beyond, that is on you. Yep. It didn't tell you when they hired you that at the end of every week, I'm going to appreciate you. That every week, you're going to get a raise. It does not say that. It does not say that it's going to change your job description. That after a week, you're going to become a supervisor. It does not say that. It doesn't. You get, if you make, I'm just throwing a number out there. I'm not saying it's you. It could be anybody. You make $20 an hour, and then you look at your paycheck after Uncle Sam done took all that stupid shit out of it, and you ain't got even $300 left, you can't get mad at the government. You chose that job. You are the one that said, this is the job for me. It's close by my house. The income is straight. It's going to cover my bills and my rent. But what you forgot was it didn't cover your unlovable habits. Mm -hmm. That's what it didn't cover. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It, it, it didn't cover your weed. You can't buy a bottle of wine. But you, you can budget it, though. Yeah, and you can budget it. I'm not saying that you can't. But what I'm saying is, is that if your budget is tight, it takes a hell of an imagination to take a dollar, take 15 cents and turn it into a dollar. Yeah, you can do a lot with a little. You just got to know what you're doing. And you know what else? That that video, that commercial everybody watch, w remember something. When you watch people do something stupid, you can learn a lot from a dummy. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because you can learn what not to do. That's what I used to tell my kids when they was growing up. Mm -hmm. If I didn't teach you nothing else, I taught you what not to do. So every time my kids do something stupid that I did, I get all up in their ass. People tell me, you yelling at them kids for nothing. Them kids grown, they ought to be able to do what they want to do. That's the problem. Being grown don't mean I take my hands off my kids. Being grown don't mean I stop fussing at them because I'm their mother. Boss lady, when she started her, her podcast, she was sitting one day in her pajamas doing her podcast. I said, excuse me, I thought you was a businesswoman. I said, you get up off your ass, you get dressed, you put your hair on, makeup on, whatever you got to do. But don't you do your show dressed like this, even if they can't see you. Mm -hmm. You can see you. You be proud of your shit. That's what you do. Until I discovered that you can do a show on Instagram, TikTok, and if you ain't looking right, you ain't gonna look right to the world either. If you look like a bum, you're gonna feel like a bum, you're yep. gonna think like a bum, you're gonna walk like a bum, you're gonna act like a bum, you're gonna live like a bum. 
But with social media, it's tricky because you can look like that and people are still watching. Let me tell you something. Because people, again, are looking for people to agree with them. That most people have a victim mindset. It agrees with where they are in their life. Let me tell so you something. So if you got a bonnet on your head and you got your robe on and you don't want to wear no clothes or you completely naked because social media done got that wild where people will get on camera and look like whatever and don't care. But there's people out there that want to see that because that's where they are in their life. And you know how people is getting rich? They're getting rich off of us because you're sitting your stupid butt on social media showing everybody what kind of person you are. And then you go out in the world and don't wonder why you don't get why you get disrespected. You get disrespected and men talk to you, talk about you in a negative way because you got on social media shaking your butt and all the rest of that. You may be a beautiful girl, but at the end of the day, all they see is sex. And that's all they're going to ever see. Yep. Because from the neck on down, we are like a chicken with our heads cut off to them. They don't see our brain. They don't see the greatness within us. They see you as a fine-shaped figure. You used to be the shape of a Coca-Cola bottle. You know, you can even buy some dishwashing liquids that's got a curvy shape. That's all they see. They don't see the greatness of nothing within you because you don't want to show them that part. Mm -hmm. No, I don't want my man to know how smart I am because he's nice looking and he got this nice car and I don't want him to leave me. Let me tell you something, baby. Just like the Mercedes Benz can get bought by a man, they will sell it to a woman too. It don't matter who buy it. But you got to love yourself enough to say, you might have it going on. You may have it all that, but I don't want to know you that well. I just don't. And it ain't got nothing to do with you. I ain't mad at you. I ain't mad at nobody. I just don't want to know you that well. And you can do it without putting another person down. You ain't got to put a man down just because he's not your type. You don't have to put him down. You don't have to lie either. Just say, no, I just don't want to know you that well. Thank you for the compliment and keep it moving. Stop lingering in long conversation. Well, what's wrong with you? Well, did the last nigga hurt you? That's none of his business. Period. You done said what you got to say. Walk away. Point blank. Period. Y'all, y'all do too much conversation. Mm-hmm. Too much conversation. Not necessarily. And it, it, it doesn't take all of that. And stop staying with niggas. 15, 16, 17, 18 years and you are still his girlfriend. I know a woman that stayed with a man for 20 years and he died. She got all dressed to get up and go to his funeral. Okay? Got to the funeral parlor. And couldn't get in. Guess why? Because his wife and kids was in there. She was with that man for 20 years. She didn't know he had a wife and didn't know he had kids. At least that's what she told everybody. But black women, no woman is that dumb. She just didn't want to admit to herself that he had another life on the other side of town. That's why they made that song Taxi. You should have got your butt in the taxi and took your ass home. That's what you should have did. Because bottom line is, if he wasn't there with you every night, then he's with somebody else. And if he ain't introducing you to his friends and his family, then you're not number one no way. Period. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all say, right? Period. Period. And do you love yourself? Do you love yourself enough to look around? I looked around my house one day, and I still do it. I said, this motherfucker ugly. I said, it stank up in here. (laughs) <laughs> and I got to put some furniture in here. I got to put some food in here. Me and my daughter have been talking about that for the last month or so. We're going to fix this house up come September. If we got to fix this motherfucker up in the cold, that's what we're going to do. Because the bottom line is, in the wintertime, that's when you spend more time at home. And what we don't do as black people, we sit and we keep waiting for opportunity or somebody to come along and fix the problem. That's not how it works. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. Period. We got to get up and do the work. If I'm tired of looking at my daughter's hair, then I'm going to braid it up. I'm going to tie it down and she can go to bed. Mm-hmm. And then I braid it up, wash it and tie it down. And every day, and once a week, she's going to get it washed and shampooed. But I'm not going to do her hair every day. And stop putting all that damn gel in their hair. Y'all got so much gel in their hair, by the time they get to lunch, their hair is white. They look like old people. <laughs> stop doing that. Well, I want her edges to be be nice. She's five. Take it in water. Dip your finger in some water. And, and some lightly Vaseline pat it. With some Vaseline. And the color will come back because right. it's water-based. Right. So when it dries, it's going to do that. Right. But if you ain't educating your, yourself, how the hell are you going to educate some kids? And not only that. You can't go off your own wisdom when you raise kids. Stop teaching your daughters that if they wear, if they wear it tight, it's right. 
No, if they wear it tight, them boys go go to school. They look at them and they see they were JJ. That's all they see. You know, and tight is uncomfortable. And tight causes uh um uh, what's that? Yeast infections. Yeast infections. What are you doing? Because they sweat, and when they sweat, the dye from the material goes in into their vagina. their vagina. Yeah, we getting deep today. Yeah, we getting deep. We getting deep today. Doing so much. if you offended by anything, you can just cut it off. It'll be marked explicit, which means not for everyone, but it's deeper. It's explicit. It's not for everybody. My daughter going to put a disclaimer on it. That's my disclaimer. I'm not going to type it out. I never do that. But I will say that if it's here in discretion is advised because we're talking about a lot of things that may be sensitive to the ear. And that's all I'm going to say. And if you got a because son. Because you have a choice. If you got a son. To listen or not. <laughs> if you got a son. And he's five years old. He's going to school and everything. He go to the bathroom. And then he come home. He got little drops on the front of his pants. And you get mad at him. You must have spilled something at lunchtime. No. He didn't wipe his dick off after he got through going to the bathroom. That's why his pants is wet in the front. And what you need to do as a mama. Is stop telling him to go take a bath. And sending him in there by himself. Boys don't wash their ass. My baby son taught me that. They run in the water and they, they splash the it. And they splash it. And you think if you put soap in the water, that's going to clean them. Now, let me tell you what I did to one of my sons. I'm not mentioning his name because I don't want him embarrassed. He was 12 years old. He wouldn't get his ass in that shower. He wouldn't get his ass in the tub. So one day I pushed his ass in there. <laughs> I was in the bathroom using the bathroom. And after I got done, he came in there. So something told me to go open the door. Open the door. He's just standing there. He's throwing water on him with his hands, just going in the tub, just throwing the water on him, throwing the water on him. And an ounce of soap hit his body once. I pushed his ass in there. I got the bath brush. And I put, I had on the, some told me to go put on my swimming suit. I put on a full body swimming suit, like they had on back in the day with the skirt with it. <laughs> I got behind him in that tub and I scrubbed it. Scrubbed his ass, his dick, his balls, everything. Legs, neck, ears, hair, face, all of that. Then I took the back of his head and I dumped his ass in the water, pulled him back out, dumped him in there again. Baptism. Nope. And you know what happened after that? You know what happened after that? Let me tell you what happened after that. <clears throat> he stayed in the bathroom so much, we had to get another house with an extra bathroom because we got sick of him being in there. Right. And now he washed his ass so much, he squeaks when he walks. Then I had a daughter. <laughs> I had a daughter. That would go in there and just sit in the water. And she rock back and forth like you rock in a rocking chair. That used to piss me off so bad. <laughs> she had grew breasts and everything. Had it all going on. Beautiful child. Wonderful personality. Just as sweet as she can be. I didn't care about none of that. I got that same shower blush. After I bleached it out from her brother. I soapied it up. Before I even got in the bathroom. Hmm. And I scrubbed her like she was a pot that had a stain that I couldn't get out. And she in the bathroom, oh, oh my God, mama. Oh, they're killing me with this. I said, if you don't shut up, I'm going to pop you in the mouth with this damn brush. And I did her the same way. I pushed her ass down in there, pulled her back out, scrubbed her up again, pushed her ass back down there. And I didn't stop washing her ass until I felt like she was clean. And you know what everybody told me? She was just about brown. That had to be my daughter. I wouldn't have did that. Well, bitch, she ain't none of your damn daughter. She was mine. And let there me tell you something. Again, another victim. Let me tell you something my mama told me. And I'm going to tell you young mamas the same thing. There when I go. clean up, when I go to work every day, I don't want my house smelling like pussy and dick. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> wash your pocketbook. smell. Wash your slit and wash your stick. Because I don't want to smell it. That's ridiculous. Go to these doggone public women bathrooms and you open up the door Ooh. and smell and knock you back out to next week. Ooh. And then everybody All your stuff like, will go back up too. You ain't going to want to use the bathroom mm -hmm. after that. Yeah. You're going to sit on the toilet and this dirt spots on it. Like, where the this bitch been sitting at? And then they got those sheets in there that you can lay on top of the toilet. You know what I do? I go right to the sink. I get a towel. I put soap on it. On a paper towel. And I scrubbed that damn toilet good. And I asked the Lord, please don't let the pee come down before I'm done. And I cleaned that toilet off. And then I go in there and I sit down. 
But the thing about it is, we're not teaching our daughters how to squat. We just let them go in there and sit on the toilet. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. five, six years from now, they got an infection and the damn doctor don't know where it came from. Because you let her sit on that toilet. And then, you're letting your daughters wear clothes like she's 22 years old and she's only seven. She got on a shirt, a little uh, a belly shirt, and she got a little, and some of them got belly rings. I've seen it. And they, they might be fake, but they still a ring. And then she got some little shoo shoo hoochie mama pants. And then your other friends will look at her and be like, oh, she looks so cute. No, she looks grown. And remember that there are pedophiles out there that don't like women. That they part. like kids. That part. And they, they can be right behind you in the grocery store. And you would never know it. Mm -hmm. A man can say to you, oh, your daughters are so beautiful. You know, I had sex with a man one time. He's seen three of my girls before me and him had sex. And the whole time we was having sex, he kept calling their name instead of mine. Oh, you know? my God. And you know what I did? I broke up with his ass. And when I tell you, I took every damn pot in my house That's and threw sad. it at the back of his head. Because I thought that was the sickest thing I had ever heard. And the thing is, my girls were not grown. My oldest three were not grown yet. My oldest three girls. He, he said their names. And he was like, yeah, man, I would love this. If I had sex with this one and this one and this one. And I pushed his ass off of me. That's ridiculous. He went out my door with his pants hanging by his knee. And all kind of marks on his back from them damn iron skillets. Make sure you buy one of those because you're going to need them. And keep a pot of grits in the house too. Hot on the stove. Just in case they want to get their ass. They want to act crazy. You can get burn their motherfucking ass up. Get to know folks before you start letting them in your house. Get to know folks. Before they can start calling your number any time of the day. Some of some of the stuff I answer right away. But some of the stuff you have to earn. And see, people don't understand boundaries. They don't. You have to earn that space in my life. To be able to call me at 2 a.m. And I'm going to pick up that phone for you. No, I'm not going to answer my phone at 2 a.m. My hours are from such and such to such and such. And if you're not in that type of bracket, you don't get the answer. You're going to need until I get back up at that hour that I start. I have business hours. Even though I don't have a physical building to say my hours is from 10 to 7. My hours is from 9 to 11. So anytime the show is on the air from 9 to 11, that's when you get to talk to me. You don't get to talk to me after 11 o'clock. And not only that, stop answering Respect, the phone. Respect, man. Stop answering the phone. And then he going to say, would you sleep? And you say, yeah. And then he want to have a 20-minute conversation about why you didn't answer the phone 30 minutes ago. Stop doing that. Oh, I know you were asleep, but I had something to tell you. You could tell me in the morning. Because I'm not going to answer the phone. That part. Stop answering well, every single thing. You, they never tell you what they wanted. All they want to know is why you didn't answer the phone. It's 11.30. I answered the phone at 11 o'clock. We still talking about why I didn't answer the phone. Bye! No, I don't answer that phone because I'm not on the phone this time of night. And you need to call me before that time or I'm not going to answer. Let's then you're we, letting that other person know boundaries. Let's just keep it real. Booty call. Yeah, that part too. That's what it was. A booty call. And when I'm off from work, so is my booty. Okay? Virginia is not open 24-7. Now, if Peter wants to visit Virginia, Peter needs to make an appointment. Right. Because Virginia is not always available. Because on the flip side of that, the average person is not going to let you do what you want to do to them when you feel like it. And that's another so thing. So why are you tolerating that? And that's Go another ahead, thing mom. I want to talk about. Go ahead. Yep. This is my pussy. Stop treating it like it's a damn demolition board. Don't be jumping up inside of it, wiggling and jiggling and all that kind of stuff, and asking me if you hurt me. Like Richard Pryor said, women deliver nine-pound babies. Uchi ouch, motherfucker, you're doing too much. And stop drilling holes down there. If you don't know where to put it at, don't have sex. Is this the right hole? You 40 something years old, you don't know where to put it? That's a red flag. That means this person don't know you. Right. And he don't know where to If they doing. don't know you, they're not going to get to know. If they don't want to get to know you as a person, they are not interested in getting to know who you are 
in the bedroom. All that's together. That's not separate. Let's stop separating uh, your whole life. Right. I'm not just some shoulders and some hips. Right. It's a lot I am a human hands. being. I have head, shoulder. You learned this in kindergarten. Head, shoulders, knees, and talk. You need that same energy. Right. When you are getting in a relationship or you are working to get to know someone. Make them respect your boundary. You can't walk up. I was in Washington, D.C. You cannot just walk up to the White House. There is a gate. Right. And you have to have a certain appointment. And people have to know you're coming before you arrive. You need to do that in your life. Yep. I'm letting everybody in your yard. But when you letting everything happen to you, this is the consequences of you just letting somebody do whatever. Stop inviting everybody to the barbecue and they don't bring nothing to the table. Make them earn the bedroom scene. And I know we got different religions, different beliefs and all that stuff. This has had nothing to do with religion. This has something to do with accountability and how you respect yourself. And stop having your self-worth, which was the last episode. And stop having babies with a man that don't take care of the kids that are already here. Do you want a man with kids? First of all. And even if you don't, if he's not taking good care of himself, he's not going to take care of a baby. That part. Or you. Or you. And you See, need to find that out. It's going to get cold. Everybody going to be looking for a bed and a warm body to lay under. You are not an electric blanket. You are not somebody's safe haven. You are not somebody's comfort zone. That's what God is for. Stop trying to save niggas that don't want to be saved. And if you're doing everything alone, you single. Yes. And if you're doing not every- your man, that's not your woman. If it, they ain't about team teamship, then there is no relationship. And you don't need no closure. When you tell him to get out, that's the closure. Can I come back? No. And that old crazy stuff they all be saying, you ain't gonna find nobody like me. That's why I'm getting rid of you, because I don't want nobody like you. And when you leave, really leave. Yeah. You ain't gotta discuss it. Cut all the lines off. Block them from social media. Yeah. Cut them off completely. And if you don't want to block Stop them. Stop explaining every damn thing. Everybody is explain. old. An explanation of the decisions you want to make. And if you don't want to explain it. If you don't want to cut them off. You can do that too. Because you can definitely ignore them. Let me tell you something. Block my them. mom. My friend, I swear boss God, lady man. will tell you. My mom and my auntie and my grandma. Had the same numbers from the time they got off there on their own. till they died. Mm-hmm. And they talked to who they wanted to talk to. Yep. If they looked at that caller ID and they didn't recognize that number, that number did not get answered. And see, what's wrong with us is that we thought that the generation before us was doing too much. Or and me, the generation me, before me, them rude, was really doing whatever. too much. No, like my daughter said, they boundaries. set boundaries. I got a gate around my house. You don't get to walk in my gate. If it says no peddlers. No sellers, whatever you got on your door. If it says beware a dog, even if you don't see a dog, respect the rules of my house. That's what Martin said on Martin, didn't he? He said, respect my rules. That's all I'm saying. And everybody laughed at Martin, laughed at Martin. But Martin was right. He said, respect my house. If you can't respect my house, you got to leave. And that's what he used to make them do. He'd open up that door and push the ass in the hallway and shut the door. Gina made him mad one time. He told her, respect the rules. She wouldn't do it. She was out in the hallway too. And that's what's wrong with us. We want everybody to respect our rules, but we don't respect nobody else's. If you come to my house to visit me, you don't talk about how my house looks. Did you come see me or my house? If you want to see my house, you you could have just stayed outside and looked at it. That show should get you thinking. We need to stop doing that. Just because you got a house full of furniture and you got $1,000 carpet flowing through the house, that don't mean that's what I got. Now, if I don't have what you have and we can't be friends, then that's fine with me. Because I'm happy for you that you live on the hill. But don't talk about me because I'm in the valley. And that's not your friend. You can live in a cardboard box. If that's your friend, they're going to support you in that damn cardboard box. They're going to get in that damn cardboard box with you. Exactly. Because if I am in, if I can't see the light. It's not a conversation I'm not trying to have. Because that might be your ally, the op that y'all say out there in Florida. Don't be friends with the op. My daughter and me had a conversation when we stayed in another house. And we had a conversation that was so deep, we should have put it on on, on, on social media. 
because that conversation was really deep. We, we really talked. could do this again, do that we again. We talked about we will do that again, just I'm like we're say. doing right now. Yep. We talked about everything, and we got stuff out, and I told her, I did just like this. I said, I need you to be real with mama, to say what you got to say, and you won't, you can cuss, you can say whatever. You can say stuff that happened in the past. It don't matter to me. Because this attitude that me and you got between us, we've been together too long. And I'm tired of that. So we need to talk. But she gave a care about uh, our relationship. But mama, share with us what you shared with me yesterday of why you were passive aggressive to the point where you felt like you couldn't talk to your parents. Because I think somebody out here really need to hear that. Because I know you're not the only one that got slapped for asking a question. I'm going to leave it just like that. When I was a little girl, I I wanted to know why things were happening the way they were happening in my life. Why my mother was so hard on me and so easy on my brothers. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know. I wasn't trying to start nothing with my mother. I wasn't trying to piss her off. And... They had boundaries back then. There were certain things that you don't ask your parents. There were certain things you couldn't talk about, couldn't talk about sex in the house, which I thought was kind of stupid considering everybody was having babies and I didn't see nobody married. But they said you couldn't talk about it. So I just, I can't remember the question I asked her. My daughter might remember, but I don't remember. You said it was a situation where you were doing something at school. You, you, you had, it was Christmas time and she bought your favorite gift. Oh, and then it led up to that. That's the part I was talking about. When um, we had one Christmas and my mother came in the dining room and she said, I don't feel like wrapping all these damn gifts. I said, I'll wrap them. And she said, you going to wrap the gifts even if it ain't nothing under the tree for you? I was like, oh, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because back then you couldn't say a whole lot. You just really couldn't say a whole lot. People don't believe that, mm-hmm. but you couldn't. And I was not the only child that was like that. So I went in there and I wrapped the gifts and everything. And uh, the next morning, my, I went in there and I woke up my mom and I asked my mom, I said, is it okay for my brothers to open up their gifts? And she said, yeah. So I'm sitting there, I'm watching my brothers open up their gifts. Oh my God, I was so happy for them because they got the stuff that they wanted. So my mom comes out. And she said, oh, everybody open up their gifts. And my brother said, no, nah, Bobby Jean didn't open hers. And I and uh, my mother said, why you didn't open up your gifts? And I'm shocked. I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, why the hell would I open up my gifts? You didn't buy me nothing. And yeah, because so, that's what she said, right? right? Okay. So there was a stereo under the tree. And under the tree was a box with... Uh, with some albums in it. And I was a Jackson 5 fan. People always thought I was a Michael Jackson fan. But I was not. I liked Michael because Michael was my age. But I was a Jackson 5 fan. So all the albums that Jackson 5 had ever made. From the time they started singing up until that period. Were in that box. Nice. So when I opened up that box I was ecstatic. I kept playing and playing and playing the records all the time. And then what happened was. I went to a poetry reading. And I didn't tell my mother about it. And I won Out of 955 students, I won. It was a forensics and debates meeting. And it was worldwide, citywide. So it was high schools from all over Wisconsin, not just Milwaukee. So I ended up winning. And when I got home, my records were broke into pieces. So I asked my mother, I said, why would you break my records? And she slapped me. And I'm sitting up there trying to hold back the tears because my mother had me so scared of her. That if I had a drop, she told us, if I had to drop one tear on her carpet, she was going to whip me. And I just had to hold him back. And it was so hard. And all I asked her was, why did you slap me? And she said, because you didn't tell me you was going to that poetry meeting. And I said, but look, Mom, I got a trophy I run. And she threw the trophy up against the wall and broke that. So all the trophies and the ribbons that I won from writing, poetry, everything I ever did in my life, even gymnastics, I couldn't show my kids because my mother broke them when I was growing up. And I found out that after I got older and started going to therapy, that my mother took my voice when I was a little girl. When you silence your children, you silence their voice. And it takes them a long time to get their voice back. I used to put up with stuff on jobs because I thought if I talked, I would get in trouble. 
Uh -huh. I didn't like getting in trouble. I didn't like being punished. Because all I could think about was all those whoopings I got for doing nothing. So, uh -huh. I, I, I just didn't talk. So, it, it went into my, it spilled over into my adulthood. I would get in relationships and when I felt like they was wrong, I didn't say anything. And then when the relationship was over, I was devastated. And I kept doing that throughout, throughout my entire life until I had my last child. And then one morning I woke up and I said, nope. It hadn't been for my oldest two daughters again, the two that were the strongest in my life, I wouldn't have never have had a voice. I would have stayed silent. My daughter told me, she said, Mama, everybody that hurt you, they did. Damn. They can't do shit to you. Yep. So you can say whatever you want to say and you can live how you want to live. But as long as they were alive, I wouldn't do it. Because they were my parents. They raised me. So I believe that they were right. But the most hurtful thing in the world is to grow up and find out that everything you was taught was wrong. Mm -hmm. They taught me all about the outer, but nothing about the inner. And I couldn't function in my life. I was not able to pay my bills. I used to spend up my money because I didn't think I was worth buying myself anything. I wouldn't even buy myself a sandwich. I would go to like Cousins or Subway. And if Didi was at home, I would buy Didi's favorite sandwich and buy her some fries or a soda or something like that. And then I would bring it home to her and lie to her. And Mama, you didn't buy yourself nothing? I said, no, I ate while I was there. And I didn't. Mm. But I told her that because I didn't want her to be mad at me. You see what that does? But she, how you do you know how I kids? feel before you even because ask me? Why do people do that? I didn't know how she felt. But I knew how I felt and what had been done to me. See, it's not the big pieces of glass that's hard to get up off the floor. It's the sprays of glass, the little bitty pieces, the, the pieces that you nobody can't can see. see. Mm -hmm. The pieces that you have to vacuum up or mop up. That's what people don't see. That's what, gets, that's what was stuck in my heart. It was mm -hmm. the sprays of the pain. The big pieces of the pain, I got over that part. But it was the scars that people couldn't see. The stuff she had instilled in me. The stuff that she pounded in me for five years old and up to now. And even after she died, I still was left with the aftermath. I got into, it was like I had got into an actual car accident. Mm. And I was the only survivor. Right. And then my legs and arms and throat box and everything was broken. But my heart, lungs, and kidney and liver was still functioning. But mentally, I was dead. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to come back alive. And I tried. I tried self-talk. I tried listening to videos and stuff. But all of it kept seeming to be the same thing. They're saying the same thing over and over again. If you're tired of being a rug, get up. Get up. Get up. If you're tired of people mistreating you, stop dealing with people like that. And I got to the point where all the voices started talking to me. And I was like, just shut up. I don't want nobody telling me to lift my head back up. I don't want nobody telling me that it'll take a few minutes to get it right. I don't want nobody telling me that I'm strong. I can do this. Because if I was strong, then why did my life fall apart? If I was strong, and if I was a good person, then why did my mom mistreat me? Why did my dad neglect me? Stop telling me that I'm strong because I'm not. And my daughter came around me. And if it hadn't been for what she said at that moment, I probably would have took my life. But she put her arms around me and she said, Mama, it takes strength to raise nine. Not just physical, but mental. I could have never done that. I don't know what the hell you did to get us grown and get us all graduated. But that took strength. I struggled like hell with my two. So I know damn well I wasn't ready for no nine. Alone. Child, and You please. know what my kids tell me? Child, please. They said, Mom, I'm not having that many kids because I don't know how you did it. And my daughter, my daughter that lives in another state, she said, I don't even have no kids. And I struggled to get my house. I couldn't imagine getting this house with nine babies. Yeah, it's I responsibility to take care of yourself. She said it was hard enough making sure I was good. And then I got nine other people dependent on me. And that was the irritation for me. I got nine people dependent on me to feed them, to clothe them, to keep a roof over their head. But like she said in Precious, and, and I, could, I could relate to the mother at this one part in the movie when she said, but who's going to take care of me? Who takes care of the heroes? Who takes care of the quiet heroes? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was nobody there taking care of me. And my oldest daughter got sick of it. She said, they buy my mama these crappy Christmas gifts. They don't acknowledge my mama's birthday. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I'm sick of that. Yeah. But who takes care of the heroes? Where, like Whitney Houston said, where do broken hearts go? Where, where is our home? Nobody stood up for me. They, my family watched my mother mistreat me. And nobody said nothing. Because everybody was worried about how my mother was going to feel if they stood up for me. And that's weak. Weak and as hell. That's how they treated me. And my daughter, one time we was at my auntie's house, and she picked up an album. And she said, Mama, she said, who was this little girl in the picture? She looked just like you. I said, that's me when I was little. No, my daughter did. She said, you mean to tell me they mistreated you? I mean, you weren't no bigger than a plate. I wish I could have went inside the she picture and picked feet her tall. up. She told me that if she had been my older sister, once she got grown, she would have picked me up and took me with her. She wouldn't have left me. There. And I would have told, would have turned her ass into the state. That's abuse. Now, the, that's what I mean earlier when I said the difference between abuse, just beating the hell out of somebody just because you think you can, and then discipline when you know better and you don't do better, and you need that coaching, that retraining to get you back on track. That's all that was for. But I understood the difference um, versus how she was raised back in the 60s versus today. And there was abuse going on. Kids was getting snatched, kidnapped, sex traffic, all the rest of that. But I learned the difference. All kids need is love because you can't lead no one without love. Leadership is the matter of the heart. It's not the matter of the money you make. And that's where people get it misconstrued. See, back then... And I know my family very well. They were very high maintenance. They were financial disciplinarians. They were not leader disciplinarians with the heart of the matter. They didn't get to the heart of the matter. It was that victim mindset. Once again, if it don't agree with me, I'm going to fuck you up because you don't agree with me. Yeah. It was a controlling mechanism. You see how she said... I felt that she was going to be mad at me. You was trying to control the situation and the situation ain't even happened yet because you were in a controlled situation, but it was controlled abusively. It's kind of like you um, are hooked on a controlled substance. The substance is controlling you. It's not actually what you're, you're using it, but now what you're using is starting to control you. And the thing is, is it was about control and power. It wasn't about raising a child right. because she had some things going on in her life that wasn't addressed. And that in turn, took she took that and took it out on her child. But let me let me just say this. I and I believe my uncles were abused, too. I wasn't the only child, though. She had two boys. Yeah, I, I, they had their own abuse. They might not have been as severe as hers or like hers, but I don't believe that they didn't get messed with or abused. In some form, because and there's the different is, types of abuse, not just is, physical. Is that it was so much going on in the house. My mother's drinking, my, my my stepfather and the drugs and stuff, and then my real dad feeling guilty that he didn't marry my mom to help raise me, but my mother told him no. And the thing is, even though my father on the surface seemed like a good person, I did not know the deep part of my dad, because I wasn't raised with him. And I didn't really know the deep part of my mother. I found out some things about her after she died, but I can't even say that to be true. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Because you really didn't get it from her. Right. Or from him. Right. So I really don't know if that's true. But all I can say is this, is that I've learned from raising children, is that when they get a certain age, you got to be honest with your kids. I started telling my kids stuff. And they was like, oh, wow. Just like one time I told my daughter, Sabrina, well, uh, God forgive me, I didn't want to say her name. But I have a daughter that's on Social Security, and all her life, I would take the Social Security money and pay bills, pay rent, buy food. And a lot of people was was like, why you didn't give Sabrina some of her money? Because I didn't want to. I'm just being honest. I took the money, and I bought personal items for the house, and and all that. And she was a kid. I figured she didn't need it. I looked at it if it was my money because my name was on the checks, not hers. Her name was on it too, but I kept it. Because a lot of times I messed up my bills and I needed her check to make up for my mistakes. So I didn't give it to her. And you know what? She wasn't even mad at me. She looked me in my face and said, oh wow. Now that's some honest shit right there. 
That's exactly what she said to me. But when we lie to our kids about what life is really like, we cripple them. I got food stamps. I sold them one time because one of my kids needed some shoes and I didn't have enough money. And I had just got my paycheck and the guy that I was dealing with stole my check. And I had cashed in and put an envelope and I taped it to the mattress and everything. And I didn't know that he was going to flip it over and do all this kind of crazy stuff when I was gone. Because I was dumb enough to trust him in my house by himself. And he stole my records and he stole my money and he stole stuff from my kids. All kind of stupid stuff I did. That's why I be telling y'all, the Bible is true what it says when there's nothing new under the sun. Y'all ain't doing nothing now that I didn't do. And I, 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 I took, I sold the food stamps. I got $80. And I bought my daughter some shoes and she was able to go to school, but I kept her out for a couple of days and lied to the school and told the school that she was sick and she wasn't. But I had to tell them something. I couldn't just say she was at home because she didn't have no shoes because that's considered abuse and they just took her from me. So I made up stuff. And I did that a lot. I made up a lot of stuff. Yeah, I lied a lot of times. Because but of, you didn't because, have to. But I lied. And let me tell you why I lied. I lied because... I grew up fearful of everything. My mother had me scared of everything. So when I started raising my kids, I was still afraid. So I raised them in fear. I didn't want my kids not to like me. So there were certain things. I would just give them stuff that they liked so they would like me. And I spent so much time trying to get their approval that I didn't get their respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it took them to get out there on their own to understand where mama was coming from. And my older two daughters are the only ones that know this deepness about me. I wasn't liked growing up. My mother put me down so bad that my friends thought I was adopted. And I said, no, she's my real mother. I come home from school. They would go across the street to their house, around the corner of their house. Why the fuck you still got your dumb ass outside? And I'm standing there going like, why do she say stuff like that? Mm -hmm. My friends mm -hmm. are standing right here. That is a she said, I know what you're thinking. You worried about your damn friends. I don't care about your friends. Get your ass in this house. You got dishes to wash and this to clean up, that to clean up. And that let me know that she was drunk because that's the only time she would talk like that. Mm. So I would go in the house. I would change my clothes. I had to tear up the top, roll my hair up because back then we had to roll our hair up with the pink rollers. Once I rolled my hair up, I had to tie my hair down and um, put on my house, cl house clothes. And uh, go up in the kitchen and clean up the kitchen so she could wash dishes. So she could cook. And everybody said, well, why would you have to go in there and wash those dishes? She was there all day. I, that's what I would have said. Well, you wouldn't have had no teeth. Because we didn't talk like that back then. You did what your parents told you to do. Mm -hmm. When they say be obedient, they meant that shit. And even though now people say, oh, that was real abusive, this, that, and the other. If they bring back some of that, a lot of these kids will still be alive. Right. Because a lot of these mamas are so busy trying to please these men that they're not taking care of home. I know a lady right now, her daughter is 15 years old, and she's going to have her second child. And her daughter can't go to school because mama got to work, so the daughter is on virtual. She got on social media, popping, whatever y'all want to call it, pop locking or pop looking or whatever y'all want to call it, shaking her ass and all the rest of that. Then when she found out she was pregnant, her stomach started getting big. She got on there popping her stomach in her butt. Her mama told her, keep doing this. She can make her some money. So she can be famous on social media. It ain't nothing pretty about a pregnant single woman. Sorry. But they gonna give her a big old baby shower and honor her and all the rest of that kind of stuff. When I got pregnant with my oldest child, my grandmother told me flat out to my face, I am not giving her a baby shower to glorify her sin. And I didn't get one. I didn't get, I didn't have a baby shower with no child. Not a one. Even when I got married, I didn't have a baby shower for Sabrina. Sorry, did not have one. And then I got told that I couldn't come to family barbecues or dinners anymore. And I said, why? Because we don't have enough chairs for you and all them damn kids you got. You do know you got nine of them, right? All my life, that's all I heard when I was raising my kids. She got nine kids. She got nine kids. I'm going to tell y'all something. 
I got a high school education. I know how to count. I know mm-hmm. how many kids I got. I got six mm-hmm. girls and three boys. But if they all had a lived, I'd have had 12. Because my second, my second oldest daughter was a twin, and my second oldest child was a twin. My second oldest child, he didn't live. And my second oldest daughter, her, sibling, her sister did not live. She bled out. And the thing about it is, is that I wasn't the world's best mother. I wasn't the worst. I wasn't the prettiest thing on the walkway, mm-hmm. but I wasn't the ugliest. But because of the life that I lived, I never felt like I was beautiful. So I didn't wear the makeup and the lashes and go get my nails and my toes done. I didn't do that. Why I didn't do that? Because I figured, what was the point? Who was going to look at me anyway? That's why I didn't do it. Nobody told me that it was okay to fix myself up and look good. I wasn't taught that. I was taught to behave myself, act like a lady, and shut up. And that's what I did. My daughter would tell you out of her own mouth that when we used to go by my family's house, I'd be the only one that was quiet. She talked more than I did. After it was over with, my mother would say, you ready to go home? i go, yep. And she'd take me home. And then my cousin would say, you ain't got to leave. I'll drop you off. I can. I know your, your apartment right down the street from Mama's house. And I said, no, that's all right. I'm going to go home with my mother. Because you know why I did that? Because if I had went home with my cousin, I would have spent three days arguing with my mother on the phone. Well, if that had to been me, I wouldn't answer the phone. It was y'all don't get it. It wasn't like that. You just don't, you just don't not answer the phone. Because she would have came to the house. And my daughter would have been like, your mother's here. Not grandma's here. She didn't do that. Not my oldest. Uh-uh. Your mother's here. And, I, and she wouldn't let her in. I had to go open the door. And she was only two and a half. Why you didn't teach her to let me in the door? That's your problem right now. You don't never tell nobody that or that or that. And I'm thinking to myself, this is your problem right now. This is why I don't open the door. Because you're acting like a stranger. And my mama said, don't talk to strangers. So after she would leave, I would be sitting on the side of my bed. That just, would, that just triggered me. I would, I'd See, I'm tears. still human. I get triggered too. And I, I'd be in tears. That's ridiculous. And Dee was like, Mama, I know you love your mom. I do. I love her too. But, but it's time for yeah. you to get away from her because she's doing too yeah, much. Yeah, like that, that's not right. Instinctively. So I know if you have... An instinct as a child, I know you grown as hell now. You should be looking out for those signs. And see, I haven't been at that age, you ain't been tainted yet. You ain't been influenced by other people yet. Friends at school and all that garbage. And I was able to detect that. So something is wrong when you can't detect stuff like that. Because your own spouse is saying stuff like that to you. Your, your mom and dad is saying that stuff to you. Your friends at school is saying that to you. And you're not paying attention. And we need to start paying attention to those red flags. They are there and stop ignoring them. Because this is the result of ignoring them. Now your whole life messed up. They gone, dead, grown, went off to college, and you messed up. Because you did not pay attention to the flag. And my daughter... Not the American flag, the red flag. Something's wrong. Something in you is telling you your intuition. And we always say women intuition is women intuition that. Are you really paying attention to that? I didn't. And the thing is, is that my daughter told me, when she said that to me, that's what made me start waking up. When she said, mama, they dead. They can't touch you no more. They can't say anything to you no more. It's okay for you to go buy you a $30 or $40 dress if that's what you want. It's okay for you to buy you a parent pair of shoes. You know, I'm I'm still wearing shoes that people gave me because they kept saying I wouldn't amount to anything. So I threw away a whole bunch of shoes the other day and I'm going to throw away some more. And when I get paid, I'm going to buy me some shoes. And it's going to be the first time on my birthday that I've had a brand, brand new pair of shoes that nobody else has ever worn since my daughter was 17. Then that's my oldest child. And right now, my eyes are full of water. And they're not sad tears. But they're releasing tears because it it took so much for me not to take my life. It took so much. And I know it was only by the grace of God that I'm still here. Because I was hurt. 
She was my mama. She was supposed to nurture and love me, but she treated me like she hated me. She treated me like she hated me. I would walk in the door and she would turn her head. Mm. I would come off from school and be glad to tell her that I got an A on my paper. You should get an A. You'd be in school every day. I was in the gymnastics meet and I was so good at it. I won medals and everything. She just threw them in the garbage. She mm. said, that's a white woman's sport. You don't need to be doing that. Oh, that's why you had the demeanor you had when I used to run track and she would keep mine. She kept my trophy. She kept my ribbon. She kept everything I accomplished. And I would wonder, and I'm glad you said this because I always wonder where your um, accolades were for poetry and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I know you had some accomplishments in life, but I never saw those. I only heard stories about it. I'm like, wait a minute. Where's the trophies you won? Where's the ribbons that you had? Because I know in gymnastics, you get tons of them if you're good. What happened? And this is what happened. And that made you feel a certain type of way with me in a real way with her because why you throw mine away, you didn't throw hers away. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something. <laughs> and I've been like this since I was a child, not knowing by what we've been discussing, but I've been this type of person all my life. You're not going to just do whatever the fuck you want to do to me. You're not going to do that and then I'm just going to respect you still. I, I, I just ain't built that way. I ain't there yet. I know about the forgiveness thing and all that, but I can forgive you over there and you're way over there. I don't have to forgive you and be up underneath you. That's not what that means. Forgiveness is for you and only you. It's not for the other person. Go ahead. What everybody needs to understand is that regardless of what I went through with my parents, every child protects an abusive parent. Because I was at the point where the abuse was so bad that I tried to ask everybody, could I come stay with them? And everybody said no. So I didn't think I had no place else to go. So I stayed. And even after I got grown, a friend of mine wanted me to move in with her. And my mother told me that if I moved with her, that she would never speak to me again. And the thought of not speaking to my mother was devastating to me. Now, some of you may say, Well, that would have been good because at least she she wouldn't have been saying nothing bad. Right. But I didn't feel that way. She was my mama and I wanted to be around her because I loved her so much. Mm, mm, mm. And then when she got sick, I was living on 33rd in St. Paul and she called me and asked me, she said, Bobby, can you please come take care of me? Mm. And I'm going to tell y'all, as much as I loved her, as much as I wanted to drop everything and just run to her, I didn't want to do it. I had to pray about it. I told her I was in the middle of something to let me call her back. And she said, okay. And I I, I, I I really, it took me a while to call her back, about a week. So I was behind on my rent, and I got an eviction notice. And I left because I told my kids that I left because my mother needed me to take care of her. But I left because I got an eviction notice. And he said that if I didn't leave that particular day, that they was going to put it on my on my, on my record. So I went on ahead and moved out and moved in with mom. I was in there for, it wasn't a good week before I was called everything but my name. She threw food at me. She talked about me. She called me stupid. All that kind of stuff. Then I started being on her side and started being mean to my kids. Because she had always been mean to us. And then one day I just stopped it all. And I said, I'm not going to keep doing this with you. All you got right now is me and my kids to take care of you. You are the reason, you are the kind of person, the reason why they make nursing home. So kids don't have to deal with this. Stop being combative with me. I could have stayed in my house and did the best I could. Went on a program or something and kept paying my rent. You're doing too much. And then she got me again. She went in her room and she started crying. 
And they were tears that came out of her eyes and everything. And I, I hugged her and I told her I was sorry for yelling at her. And it wasn't a good hour later where, where the fuck is my food at? When you gonna get up off your ass and feed me? And I was like, we just had an emotional moment and now you're doing this again? And she would do that a lot throughout my life. We would forg- I would forgive her. We would move on and she would go right back to doing the same thing. That's why now I'm at a point in my life now where I'm understanding that it's okay to tell people no. I didn't know that when I was growing up. You don't get it. We were not able to say that to our parents. My mother was like a dictator. I wasn't going to stand up in my mama's face and tell her no. She hit us with whatever she could get her hands on. Broomsticks, glass ashtrays, the back of a pressing comb when it's hot. I got hit with that stuff. Got hit with the stitching cords and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, um, the thing that you... Uh, 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 the thing that you charge your battery with, with your car. She hit us with stuff like that. When she was drunk, she was terrible. We used to have to run out the house. We ran out the house because we knew she couldn't run out of stairs because she was drunk. And then every time my brothers got in trouble, I got a whooping. They didn't. And one day they made the mistake of asking her, why you keep hitting Bobby instead of us? We the ones did it. And she slapped them. And when she slapped my brothers, they moved out. They left. Even my middle brother left. He came back after mama got older. My baby brother didn't come back. Even though I left first. And I kept coming home because I couldn't function out there on my own. I was struggling financially and I didn't know how to take care of money. And I thought she said if I come back home she would teach me and she didn't. She found out how much money I was getting because she had a friend at the Social Security office. And she told her and she would take half my money and the other half, she would spend it up in the house. And that's when they was giving the checks in the mail. And she would go to the bank and sign my name and cash my checks and didn't get nothing. She carried my kids on her taxes and I didn't get none of that money. And I don't know how much she got from my kids. I was told later that she got a lot, but I didn't know that. And people said, you didn't question it? You didn't ask? No, you couldn't do that. Everybody kept saying, I would have just took the beating. I didn't want to get hit anymore. I was in a domestic violence situation. And she wasn't my lover or my friend. She was my mama. And I was taught that you honor and respect your parents. I didn't know how to walk away. And I got tired of people telling me, just get up and walk. How was I going to walk away from my mother when I didn't know how to do anything? I didn't know how to stand up for myself. I didn't know I had that much power within me to do it. My older daughters helped me get by. They kept telling me, Mama, we got you. You don't have to go back and stay with Granny. But then they got to the point where they didn't want to help anymore for a while. And my daughter will tell you that. And I just didn't know what to do. I was so scared. I was so scared she was going to hurt me. And one time, it had got so bad, I thought she was going to kill me. She had let her boyfriend lock me in a room. And I sat in my feces for six and a half hours. And when I got off, when she got off of work, she seen the boys and she asked her boyfriend where I was at. He said, I locked her in her room because she was being disrespectful. So when she opened up the door, she said, why was you being disrespectful? I taught you better than that. That's not what happened. I didn't want to sit out in the dining room and watch TV with him. So he got mad and locked me in my room. And because of that situation, I've been claustrophobic all my life. It was so hard for me to be married with that door shut. It was so hard for me to be in a relationship with that door shut. I couldn't do it. That's why I'm not in a relationship now. I even get claustrophobia being in a hotel room with the door shut. 
The only reason why I'm able to get past it is because of my daughters. They don't know how much of a big help they were to me. And where we make a mistake at a society is that we're not honest with our kids. We tell them so much. But I was broken and dehuman, dehumanized. That's what my grandmother called it. And I didn't know what to do. And I got tired of people treating me like crap. I got tired of being hurt and I had did nothing to nobody. But everybody used to come for me. One time I was living on 36th, right, off the Capitol, and my granddaughter accidentally locked the basement door. And I was downstairs in the basement, capable of walking up the stairs. And her mama, which is boss lady, said, why is my mama in that basement screaming like that? And the kid said, Naya locked the door. She beat the shit out of Naya. She said, don't you ever lock my mama in no room. And my kids had to come down here and walk me up the stairs. And I was scared. Every step I took, and I'm telling you why I was scared, and I never told my daughter. It wasn't because of the claustrophobia. I was coming home from school one day, and my mother told us to go through the back door instead of the front, and I went through the front, and I forgot. So as I was going, and then I came back down and went through the back door. So as I was going up the back steps, my mama pushed me into the steps, and my lip got stuck on the stair. And instead of her calling 911, she snatched my face off the stair. And she sold up my face herself. And I just sat there and listened up while she was sewing up my face with that needle. And it hurt her so bad. And she told me after she sewed up my face, she said, Don't you ever do nothing stupid like that again. When I tell you to go up the back stairs, you go up the back stairs. And I said, Yes, ma'am. And I stayed home for a couple of days until it turned into a scar. And then she let me go back to school. Nobody knows what I went to in that house. It was hell in that house. But I couldn't leave. There was no place I could go. She told me if I go over to Joyce's house, she was going to have her mama arrested for kidnapping. She told me if I go over to my auntie's and uncle's house, she would walk in and beat me up. And I believed it. I was just scared. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So when I started having kids, I didn't want my kids like that. I couldn't. Because I thought it was a better way, so I learned how to talk to them. I whooped it when it was severe, but I just couldn't. And when they wouldn't help me financially, I was mad at them. Not because they didn't give me no money, but because I had already been turned away from my old family. Why would my kids not help me? Last week, I, I went three days without food because I was scared to ask my daughter for help because I was so used to everybody saying no. So I thought everybody was going to do that again. And she said, Mama, I would never do you like that. I would, you don't you ever be in this house be hungry and not too. But I have a child in the house that had a job. And she gave me $5. And I used it to go to work and get home. And I had a dollar left, and I bought me a, a 50, 15 cent juice and a bag of chips, and that's all I had. And then my, my daughter gave me some money, and I was able to buy me some food, and I was able to be okay. But until you have walked in the shoes that I've been in, you will never understand why I try to stay so close to God, because people are so mean. Then how can people tell you that they love you and treat you like that? She brought me here when she was 16. I didn't ask to come. But to mistreat me because you felt like I stopped your life. And you destroyed mine. And she didn't even care. When I got married, she threw my wedding cake on the floor. No, it actually fell in my lap because she pushed the table. And she didn't try to buy me another one. My daughter tell you that, did she? She said, I, I, I remember it. And I was, I don't, what, that was, what year was that? You were almost 12. Yep, that was 91. Chantel was three. And I don't give a damn about that cake falling on the fucking floor. I don't want you to marry that fucking man. He's an asshole. And I see it coming for you see it. 
You always getting with these motherfuckers thinking they're going to do something for you. And they end up, you in here in my house, crying and, and, and snotting and snooting on my goddamn floor. Now get this goddamn cake up. And at first I didn't know who she was talking to. Because I'm like, the cake fell on me. You pushed the table, but I got to get it up. Get her the fuck out of my house. I'm sick of her talking slick to me. I'm like, bye. And I had on my wedding dress. I was like, bye. Because see, I'm not. I've been watching. I've been watching my mama whole life since '79 with her damn mouth, and I got tired of it. I've been watching my grandpa, her her father's family disrespect her, and I got tired of it. I said, I I got a work check and food stamps. I don't even know why you here for Christmas. Exactly. Stupid ass gives half ass conversations, talking slick, and you act like when your kids are in front of you. They're in front of you when you don't think they're around. And I'm going to leave it like that. And all that stuff you said, I heard it. All that talking about us on the phone, I hear it. Because you loud, like, we ain't even here. First of all, you don't even give a damn that we in the next room. What are you doing? What are you doing? When you have a conversation like that, your kids... Are not going to take that conversation like adults take it. Because they're not adults. And then she she would leave. She would go buy me food. When I would call her. She would help me. But I had to hear her. I got to get the cake up. And you pushed it on me. I, I didn't understand that. So to her that was disrespectful. And that honor your mother and father crap. And it's not crap. Because it's, it's the word of God. That's true enough. But we need to better understand that. Yeah, what we, first we need to understand what honor truly is yeah. before we can honor anything or anybody. Let's get that out the way because that that verse and a lot of verses with it has been twisted and turned to accommodate people with the victim mindset. If it ain't agreeing with me, I'm not going to do that. I and I don't think God himself appreciated. That's disrespect. That's crossing the line. That's. Uh, not respecting boundaries. That's why we have the word of God. So we can have boundaries. You can't do this or that. Because if you do this or that. This will destroy your life from the very beginning. And people still walk around here. Like that don't apply to them. But get mad at everybody else. Because their life ain't where they need to be. De- Deidre, in life. Tell them about the Saturday you woke up. And your grandmother was going off and wasn't nothing wrong. It was a weekend that we went over grandma house. And we spent the night. And I think it was maybe the first or second time since I had been small. And like I told y'all, when I lost Laurie, Laurie wasn't a stranger. But she was a stranger in a way because we didn't get cool until I got grown, really. I I thought this lady had damn near was adopted in the family. And it had trickled down where she had to raise my mama because that's how she was acting. So we goes, and I kept wondering why she would snap off. And she was always snappy. Like, she was a crab. She was always snapping about something. Any and everything will make her pop off. Not understanding that she didn't have emotional intelligence. But like anybody, like she kept saying, that's my mom. That's my grandma. But, but, but you can't base stuff because of. And I think me and Young Promise had that talk. When we were doing our interview, but it was a particular weekend where we had went over there to spend the night and nothing was wrong. The night went good. We ate, we laughed, we listened to music, we danced. I mean, we had a good time, took pictures and everything. I'm like, oh, wow, this is really cool. Now I get to experience what being with a grandma is like because my great grandmother was more grandmothery, if you know what I mean. She was a disciplinarian, but she did it out of love and she was more nurturing and she was more patient. My grandmother was not that woman. She was direct. She was this my way or the highway. You can kiss my ass if you don't like it. Kick rocks if you don't do it. Whatever. Right. So we get over there the next morning. Last Saturday night was great. We get up Sunday morning. And I hear some screaming in the kitchen. Because it was two rooms. It was her room that she let me sleep in by myself. She wouldn't let mama go in there and sleep with me, which I don't understand. And then, you know, mama would be in the guest room or the den or something like that. Because the house was pretty big, but it just had two bedrooms. 
And, and to a child, a two-bedroom house is huge, you know, because we come from an apartment building. So I thought grandma was rich and she was just protecting her stuff because she had a lot of pretty stuff in the house and she didn't want nobody to touch it. But it wasn't that particular situation this Sunday. She just got up. Nothing was wrong. Nothing happened the night before. We wasn't there Friday, so we don't know what happened Friday, Thursday, whatever. She just got up and just snapped. I don't know why these motherfuckers in my house. I don't know why people want me to do what they want me to do. And I can't do nothing. I'm sitting up here like, what the hell? (laughs) Why are you? Okay, wait. My first thought was, mommy, what's wrong with granny? And I told you nothing. And people would tell me that. My uncles told me that. My aunties told me that because I went to everybody. I wasn't scared to talk. I wasn't scared to ask questions. I would take a whooping for certain shit. I've, I've always been like that, a rebel. I will open my mouth and say whatever. It doesn't matter. I needed to know. It was just something in me that needed to know stuff. And you know how your kids, you know, you raising kids now as an adult and your kids, some parents have told me this, they get on my nerves asking all them questions. Let them ask you questions, answer them because they're coming to you because they trust your judgment. And you better be glad they're coming to you because they can go to another one and they can steer them the wrong way. Do you want that? Yep. My mother didn't care. You know what I'm saying? But then I thought that. Growing up, after I became an adult and I learned about emotional intelligence and I learned about, you know, mastering emotions and all that. Because I had some stuff I had to deal with with myself. And and, and still needing that question, what is so wrong with people that they just start snapping? Like, I've seen people snap on the bus and ain't nobody talking to them. They just going off. Like, somebody is literally sitting next to them and they snapping. And they got a dialogue back and forth. They answering themselves, all that. I never understood that. It was psychologically something going on. And I was like, maybe something traumatized her. Maybe something was, she was in a bad car accident. Or maybe she was molested as a child. Maybe, you know, because I'm getting influenced by the world. And society is putting this in front of me. And maybe these are some of the reasons. And some most of those stories were true. About why people get to that point. Or they have schizophrenia disorder. Or they're bipolar disorders and all this kind of stuff. Because I went to medical school for a little while. Because I was so interested in figuring out why people just pop off like that. And I couldn't get the answers I needed from my family. So I went to school for it. I said, I'm going to go just for medical assistant. I'm going to start fresh. I'm going to start basic. Something that I can learn real easily and then move my way up to psychology. My baby sister, I'm so proud of her. She ended up doing it. But when I had to deliver her in the NICU and the doctors fell and dropped the ball, I decided that was not a career I wanted to do. I don't want to do no career where people get to drop the ball and then I'm the blame for it. Because I watched that growing up. People not taking accountability and responsibility for the things that they do. But they could get on you or on top of you, hover over you about the stuff that you're not doing. I don't agree with that on a job, in a business, nowhere. That's not cool. That's not so much of not cool. It's immorally correct. Incorrect. And it's sad to say, but it's true. Looking back at that. That popping off is psychologically something going around in the brain. The brain tells the body what to do. And that's true in medical science. And I, it's a proven fact. I could look it up. And, and, I, and I, I'm telling you, a whole bunch of articles will pop up about it. And, and the characteristics of this and that. And the style of this and this and that. It's coming from somewhere. Don't nobody just do nothing for no reason. There's a reason. We just don't know what it is. And we need to figure out what that reason is. And if you can't get it and you can't get your family to be honest with you, it's like the street code. If you can't get your own mama to be honest with you or you can't trust your own mom and dad, who can you trust? That's not true. You were so, we were so in a controlled environment till it was against the law damn near to go outside for some resources on how to get help. You didn't want to get help because you wanted to stay where you at because you thought where you at, you were right. That generation was based on right and wrong, black and white. It was no other ways. It, 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 I raised you. I did the best I can with you. You owe me. That is not correct. No, it's 
That is incorrect. And my thing is with the helping part financially, why are you just getting my help financially? Or are we close because I help you? I was questioning a lot of that. Before I give you my money that I earn, because you grew up teaching me that that money that they say pay to the order of so-and-so, last name so-and-so, that's your money. You get to do whatever you want. Why do I have to help you with your finances when you cause the problem? Back to what I was saying. You pushed the table. The cake fell on me. Why do I got to clean it up? I agree with that. I guess. Why do I got to clean up your finances when you don't want to clean up your finances? Right. And I came in the house with a financial plan. I came in the house from a workshop. I went and got actually got a financial license where I can teach people how to take care of their finances. You didn't want to do it that way. You wanted to do it your way and then wonder why your way don't work. Well, it took me a long time. Don't get upset at me. It's not about right or wrong. You're not doing it correctly. I got the correct way to do it and it actually worked for me. And I got proof to show you that it works. Why are you still mad? Because I didn't just physically hand it to you? That's not life. People not going to just throw money at you. You're not a stripper. I guess the reason why I felt that. That's why I had a problem with that. And no, that's why I didn't sometimes didn't give up money. Because I'm like, why should I let you take advantage of me when you took advantage of your own money? I agree with that. And I'm going to leave it at that. I agree with that. But I guess I didn't look at it. It wasn't the money aspect that I was looking at. It was the fact that nobody stood for me, stood up for me, or nobody helped me. So when they didn't give me any money financially, I didn't look at it as they won't give me no money. I looked at it as why they won't help me. That's the part. That's the way I looked at it. And I'm looking at it like I am helping you. Let's go through the steps together. Yeah. Let's pay these bills together. Let's map out what we need every month and find out if we either lacking the amount of money that we need or we're not making enough money to cover everything. I, I agree with that, but then I have I have to remember I have to rem, I had to learn that over time, like when you break a vase, you can you can glue it up, you can tape it back up, you can put contact paper on it, and probably make it look brand new. But at the end of the day, it's still broken, mm-hmm. and it'll never look like it did when it was first made. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened to me. I spent my life. Taping up my heart, gluing up my heart. And I looked around one day and my heart started to fall apart because I have a weak heart now. And a lot of people say, oh, you have a weak heart because you didn't take care of yourself. Well, let me say it to you like this. When you grow up in a household with people that don't teach you that, you don't know that. Right. I can't do something I wasn't taught. Right. So when I got out there on my own, all I was taught was you take care of your kids. That's what I did. Well, what about you? What do you mean, what about me? There was no there was no what about me when I was growing up. Right. So why would I raise my kids thinking that there was a what about me? I would let bills go to make sure that they had what they wanted. I didn't know a what about me. We were in the dark because of things that they wanted because I thought that's what I was supposed to do because I didn't know anything because everybody kept saying, take care of your kids. And we took kids. it as... It is, you is making it about you. Based on how everybody treated you, it's our fault. Now we're in the dark. Because we didn't look out for you like they were supposed to. It was our responsibility to look out for you because they didn't. And we don't understand where that's coming from. And I, we don't know none of this. I didn't understand myself. We getting fussed at. We, every 30 days, we getting cussed out about rent, bill. Wait, wait, whoa. We don't even know how much stuff costs. We don't. We didn't choose to live in this house. When you went to go look for houses, you didn't take us with you. So why are we contributing to something we didn't even agree with? Now we got businesses. We got jobs teaching us this. We've been influenced by the world now. And that's not how the world works. And then you want us to come in this house and operate opposite of how the world works? I didn't know any better. We didn't know either. They learned that was the battle with us. Now right. mama could get anything out of us she won't. Because we understand now because she told us what happened. Because we were trying to figure out why we're to blame. We didn't ask to be here either. We didn't ask you to ask us to come here in these kind of conditions. You you knew it was jacked up before you had us. Why did you even do that? Because I was looking for somebody to love me. And to be honest, 
a lot of times when I had sex with a man, people don't, and it's so hard for me to say it even today, I just wanted a hug. And that's the only time I got one. <laughs> that's not cool. It's not cool. I did. I remember about a week ago, a couple of days ago, Dee was coming out, out Boss Lady was coming out of her room. And I said, Can I have a hug? And she hugged me. And it made my whole day. Mm. Because I would ask for hugs when I was little. Get away from me. Yep, that's how she was. And it wasn't just my mother. Why you all up on me? Get off of me. I don't do that shit. It Get on. It wasn't just my mother. She did that to us too. When I would take when she would take me over to my relative's house before I was old enough to have children, if she didn't hug me, she would sit there and somebody else would reach out to hug me and she would sit in her chair and nod her head back and forth. And they would hug me. My Uncle JB didn't care. He hugged me regardless. He said, you shut up. You don't tell me. And that's, that's like why that. he didn't come around a lot. Because yeah. she didn't, again, fall prey to that victim mindset. That's like she gave, he gave us $20 a piece once, me and my two brothers. Mm -hmm. And when he left and went back to Indiana, she took our money. She said, this is going to pay for the light bill because y'all the ones that use up all the lights because I'm at work. And she took our money. Well, she snatched my money. She snatched Dale's and she ended up getting a fake 20 for Perry. (laughs) 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 Oh my God. I don't want not the f- counterfeit to money. Listen to this like, show what? <laughs> and think that my daughter thought I was weak because that's not the way my daughter feels about me. No, it's not. We're doing this show because it needs to be done. It does. And even though it's hard for me to talk about, and people say you still ain't gotten over it, this was an emotional part of my life. This is what caused me to be how I am today. These people were my family. Mm-hmm. I grew up around them. I was born into their care. And they did with me what they wanted to do with me. And they and they thought it was okay. And they figured like it wouldn't ruin my life. But it did. And when I realized I could do better, they were all dead. Mm. They had to die for me to be able to live. And I believe that God did that. Oh, yeah. Because... I felt stuck. When I tell you, I didn't even go to the store without my mother. I tried a couple of times, but she would always show up. And then she would take me to these expensive stores when I would get my food stamps. Mama, why are you taking me to pick and save? I can't afford pick and save. I wanted to go to like all these or Cub Foods or Jewel Osco. I miss Jewel Osco. Damn, Chicago and stole our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing but is, salute though. <laughs> but the thing is, is that when that's why it's good for you to have your own money and be able to take care of your own self. Because when you are a slave to other people's transportation, you have to go where they want to go. And I like that the hard way. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. Like if I ask you to take me to the store, this is the store I want to go to. If I have to go to the store you want me to go to, then you're not taking me to the store. I'm accompanying you to your store. I just happen to be a guest in your car. And I don't want that. So I start. I started back to riding the bus again and walking. And everybody, why are you doing that? Uh, if you call me, I'll take you somewhere. No, you won't because I'm not going to put gas in your car because your car costs more than the bus. And I'm not doing that. I can take the bus to 124th and Capitol if I want to go to the Target over there. I can take the bus to Bayshore. I have no problem. I took the board bus to Bayshore 50-something years ago when I was a teenager. And Bayshore is still in the same spot. Mm-hmm. And the thing that's so crazy is that I became a slave to what mastered me. My mother mastered me, so I became my mom's slave. Whatever she asked me to do, I would do it, and I wouldn't question it. And if she said I wouldn't, couldn't go somewhere, I didn't go. It was like, oh, what? People used to tell me, well, if she was my mom and she go to work, and I know she gone 10, 12 hours, I would have left. I, I didn't do that. She had mastered me, so I stayed at home. She said, don't go somewhere, don't go somewhere. If she had literally told me before I got married, don't marry him, I wouldn't have done it. That's just how much of a slave I had became. And she knew that. 
And she took advantage of it. And she took advantage of me. And in return, I took advantage of my kids. Because I did what I was taught to do. Until somebody, an old white lady came up to me and told me, she said, you stop treating them kids like that. Them kids, they never did nothing to you. Leave them kids alone just because your mama raised you that way. Don't you do them kids that way. Raise them different. So after me and her had about a three long conversation, she stayed down the street from me. I started talking to my kids different. I'd ask my sons, can y'all please take out the garbage? No rush. I used to say that to my daughters. I said, will y'all please clean up the house for me while I'm at work? Sure, mama, we got you. <laughs> it was not an issue. But when I what I messed up at is when they started going to work and people started popping off at them. Oh, my God. Or being sneaky. My kids would tell. I don't like the passive-aggressive pop-offs. And I don't like the abruptly aggressive pop offs. Both. My kids have lost. Will cause job. your business to lose me, which will cause you to lose more business because you're taking your authority too far. My daughter told one one of her supervisors, my daughter, that don't stay here. I cussed her she ass told out. one of her supervisors, she said, My mama don't talk to me like that. Yes, she do. You got a ghetto mama. She said, No, I do not have a ghetto mother. And my mother doesn't talk to me like that. When she wants me to do something, she asks me. She asked me when I was little and she asked me since I've been grown. And if it's top priority, she addresses it right away. She don't wait two and three weeks and then drop the ball in the middle of the day. Before you get up, this is what my mama does. Before you get up, I got something to talk to you about. So I want you dressed and prepared to what I'm going to have to say to you. You know these jobs? They don't prepare you for nothing. They tell you in the middle of the day. Or they tell you two, three weeks later. Which is a failure on their leadership. Because if something is top priority, don't you need to know now? That's just Not like when you feel like telling me. When you feel like going through your little stuff. And I know you a human being too and all of that. But you took the job. And how you feel and what you don't feel like doing doesn't matter when shit is fucked up and you need to open up your damn mouth. Like I said in the beginning, the social skills y'all got suck. And then you pe- expect people to follow your lead when you lead no bullshit. And it's not going to happen. And I've left plenty of jobs because of it. And I'm going to be professional anyway. And that's also what I was taught. You don't just quit a job before you find a new gig. You find a new gig and you put your two weeks in. That's just like when, when a, a Don't week, do what they did. A week do ago, it better than they did. A week ago, I was getting out of my boss's car. She dropped me off from work. and My fault for getting loud, but that, daughter, that really made me upset. My daughter, I asked my daughter, I said, can you come and help mommy if you don't mind? So she came down the stairs, and before she touched my stuff, I said, I got something to tell you, and I want you to get mad. I said, I'm hungry. I've been hungry for three days. She said, Mom, why you didn't say nothing? And I said, because I did. And everybody I asked told me no. I asked Danielle. I asked my daughter, one of my daughters, and then I asked my other daughter. And they wouldn't help me. And then she said, Mama, you know that I I don't want you to not eat. I said, I don't care if you take me out to eat or if you buy me something, it don't matter. I was almost ready to cry. I said, I'm just hungry. I said, I didn't even know that not eating affected my mental. Right. I couldn't even take my medicine because I hadn't ate, eaten. And I couldn't eat at work because school wasn't in yet. So I couldn't eat at work. And I would eat a little bit of breakfast in the morning, like a couple of pieces of toast, so I could take my medicine and be able to function at work because I need my medicine to function. And... Um, that's what I told my daughter. And she didn't yell at me because she knows that I don't like being yelled at. So she said, Mama, don't do that. If you need something, if you're hungry, you got to tell me because I can't do nothing if I don't know. And I said, you're right. But it, because I was so traumatized as a child, it was so hard to talk to my child because I did not want to be yelled at again. I don't want to be yelled at. I just, I was yelled at all my life. Stop doing that. Because I can hear you. Don't yell at me. She was there on that top porch when I was a little girl. Get out, get out, get out. Loudest parent on the block. She only had three kids. She had less kids than anybody on the block, but had the biggest mouth. 
And it was so embarrassing. And people, and kids be like, oh, your mother just wants y'all to eat dinner. You know what? You'd have to meet her to know it wasn't what everybody thought. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. camouflaged the good. My daughter would tell you. Mm -hmm. When she got around other people, this is my daughter. I love her. She'll do anything in the world for me. And my oldest daughter used to look at her like, who is this woman? I mean, my eyes is bucked out of my head. I got one hand on each side of my face with my mouth open. Like, who is she talking about? And then people got nervous to say, what's wrong with your daughter? Why is she looking like that? I didn't say anything. I I'm what... shocked. Because this is not... That person you see is not who you see now. Right. And I'm trying to figure out how you was able to... It was like when I, I compared it to cartoons. Remember, I'm still a kid. So I'm only going to compare stuff to what I'm seeing. Right. That's why I watch TV now. Because that was... That spiraled out of control, and that wasn't the truth. And so, that, that'll mess you all up. Right. Following the wrong thing and try to compare other things to reality. That's not reality. My grandmother was not a cartoon. So, I'm kind of figuring, like, why is she metamorphosizing it? Changing it? Who is that? <laughs> How did you do that? I mean, she could be... I think that's where I got it from. She could be... Call her street and then turn around and be the most professional person you could ever meet. Baby, can you stop and pause it for a minute? I think that's Miss Ellen. Oh, okay. Um, so we're going to end it right here. <laughs> we might have a part two of Unlovable Habits. I appreciate you guys for your love and support. Make sure y'all tune in tonight at 7. I'll be posting it so you can have a free listen to it and download it and share it with many people that you know need to hear it. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you tonight at 9 p.m. Central. Stay blessed. Thank you so much.